William Bloody fucking bloke Manosphere rubbish Speed dates with Sarah the Rolging Tomato Nothing but a bunch of bully who My women is on time Damn, mama, you must be new on my scene. Damn. What's your name? It's Shy, short for Chicago. Oh, you ain't cold as the windy city because the way I feel now, baby, I could show warm you up. As long as you've been gone, baby, you know. Oh, Lord. Let's do it. No shit, baby. I can dig it. What's the matter? First drop of juice is there for her to sit. Honey, that means she back off to get the picture. Set stop! Niggas one and three, they call and drink my fist. Set stop! Niggas one and three, they call and drink my fist. Set stop! Niggas one and three, they call and drink my fist. You want freestyle? That's right, the style is free. Niggas suck my dick and they grill and drink my fist. What's up, people? Saturday Night Live. Try not get, not to get this shut down. Uh, yeah, so we're having the Manosphere episode today because I guess somebody accused me of being in the Manosphere. Well, I didn't know that I was bringing you guys that content. Uh, I did share some of that kind of stuff on somebody else's channel, an appropriate channel, I would say. But anyway, we're here, Saturday night live stream. I got my Modelo here. And I remember there was a certain someone who had a uh, live stream earlier in the week. He just kind of plays tunes and whatnot, and I said, I think I'm going to go live on Saturday. Going to come up with a theme, but it's somewhat unplanned, and, you know, he had a hard time wrapping his head around that one. Well, this is what you're getting. It's a theme, and it's unplanned, because uh, we're going to talk about uh, Cool Keith's sex style, and I don't know what the fuck to say about it. So, uh, anyway, we're just kind of chilling here, and evening time's a little bit weird for me. I'm used to going on in the morning, and then with my coffee and now I got beer so it is a little bit of a different mindset here but I might play some tunes for you tonight and uh we had DV, uh, D, uh, DJ Davey Strange Name playing those jams thank you Davey from from the uh the vaults of his deep vinyl collection that we all know about anyways um I catch up with uh <laughs> we got Mike Ricefield's uh the fuck is the manager good question you know uh so uh I just sort of I was trying to come up with a theme tonight, and I was going to do, wow, you know, maybe you should do a spotlight on a year, or like a decade. You could do 1974 to a 50th anniversary, or 84 to you know, 40 years ago. But I did the 84 records on the on Ian's channel, and then the 94 records, uh, I sh I've already shown a lot of those doing the hip-hop review stuff. So I was going to do 74, and then I saw that Mr. Davey Strangename made me a new t-shirt today, accusing me of being part of the manosphere and i was just like wow you know i i never thought that uh i never thought about that once of the content that i gave you guys you know i have salted in some manis manosphere type jokes and then of course you know you may have seen me on some uh recent uh tomato shows or whatnot but anyways ryan anderson welcome to the show got any e40 i do in the other room I have E40 Federal. It's a repress. Uh, it's a dope record, um, but I don't know if I'm going to be bringing it out tonight. I guess now that we're having the Manosphere episode tonight, I was going to be playing the raunchy hip-hop tracks. I mean, I do have uh, my uh, Cool Keith Sex Style, baby, which I did show this in a recent episode or maybe two times, but tonight we're going to be playing clips of it and hopefully not get banned. Uh, we had Beetle Babe in here, so... Uh, Hopefully she's still hanging out. 
Uh, I was going to invite some people up here. You know what? I may as well put the StreamYard link in. And I just said, you know, this is a Manosphere episode. We could have speed dates on this episode. So step right up and be a contestant on, I don't know what I'm calling it. Uh, Manosphere meets the vinyl community. The vinyl sphere. There we go. Anyways, uh, we're just kind of kicking it. I guess uh, you may have caught that Sunday live stream that I did where I was at the record show. And I guess I did get some more records out of uh, those $1 and $2 bins because, you know me, I'm a bargain shopper. So I'll go ahead and before we uh, start the raunch off, um, I guess before we do, uh, let me know who's here. If you're from the Manosphere, hit number one. I didn't promote this for Manosphere, but apparently people think that that's who I am now. But uh, anyways, I got a Young Holt Unlimited Trio, um, or Young Holt Trio, I guess is what they are on this record. Whack Whack, which is instrumental jazz, soul jazz group on Brunswick, which is going to be very, of Northern soul style soul, uh, the most common that you're going to find. Um, kind of like maybe a a northern soul version of Booker T and the MGs as they were the backing group on a lot of Brunswick records especially for like Barbara Acklin or uh Jackie Wilson so let's see we got uh Siege is from the Manosphere we got Beetle Babe uh nah I don't want to speed date but I followed the Manosphere well that's cool you know I posted the streamyard link I, I won't hold you to a speed date with me Beetle Beetle Babe but uh if you want to fill me in on what you know about the Manosphere, I'd be more than happy to hear it. And then uh, Siege D, I think, uh, I don't like to use Manosphere. It sounds like, you know, I always thought the Manosphere was a gay nightclub. But uh, one moment here. We have, welcome to the first time ever, first ever appearance on the Pumping Vinyl channel. We have Michael at Ricefield Records. How are you tonight? Good, William. Good. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't want to. You like my angle? Uh, yeah, no, I can. I uh, you got a hat going on too. Yeah, yeah. I want to be like. I want to be like your your nemesis. Oh, yeah. oh I, <laughs> you threw me off. Uh, hold on a yeah. second. So is is Bad Rice supposed to be a, a knock on his name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, now now you're, that I know you're you do, a little slow, you know that. Hey, I, I've been drinking some beer tonight. You got? I, I don't. I, I, I I've only had one pot of coffee, so you have to bear with me. I love the sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, so he now doesn't that I look at the camera, he doesn't look at the camera. He looks. Yeah. Well, hold on a second. Now I got to do it. All right. But I've never shown records like this, so you can't look at the camera, William. Yeah. You know, no, you're you're that's right. How he, that's it. That's how he disarms people. Yeah. You know. Oh no! For, and he for has sure. this like. He has this like, you know, Larry Ellison beard. I think he works in the software. He's gotta be in the software business because, you know, calling himself bad, bad Oracle. He yeah. kind of, and he's got that red hair look and that beard. He kind of is like a Larry Ellison type, you know? You know, so, I think he, he's based Oracle is his name. But, based Oracle, uh, right, right. Yeah. But I, I wanna, I, I'm parodying his name too. Everybody's parodying this guy right now. And the funny thing is, I mean, I'm going to be real honest with you. I, yes. I called into his live stream last night. I'm like, let me have a civil conversation with you, dude. And and it was okay. When, when we're not like on a panel of eight people, it's like we can get along a little bit better. And okay, would okay would I go have a beer with the guy at the bar? Sure. But would I hang out with this guy on a regular basis? No. I mean, I probably, you know, probably not my type of person, but... I was, I just like you know me. It's like if I got to clear the air with someone, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. But uh, anyway, Mike, I guess while you're here, can I show you some records here? Yeah, please do, please do. But, yeah, no, I just got done showing this Young Holt Unlimited Trio, and like you know, I'm a bargain bin shopper. I think we all kind of are in, a, in a lot of ways. I mean, me I think too. Part, part of rec record collecting is we love having the valuable records, but then we love bragging about how how. You know how cheap we got the record. But anyway, I'm going to show these three off yeah. kind of at the same time. This is more of like in the '60s garage surf kind of era. This yeah. is the, uh, this is a U.S. compilation of the sur sur uh, Searchers and the Rattles. Yeah, kind of British European group. I think the Rattles may have been a German group, but uh, this is a compilation getting their music in the U.S. And this is just kind of back in that era where you know you, you had a lot of Beatles ripoffs or not ripoffs, but Beatles copycats or people who were. Fans who were doing that formula, but this is a great record. I yeah. think the last copy I had of this was Super Beat, and when I saw this at the show, 
cool thing about these right they had like uh when i first got there all my all my ne real life nemesis were uh first to the bins and i was like okay i, I you, you guys win and that's when i'm like i'm not even going over there because i don't even want to see what's in their stack and it's like one of those things where like the few times where i'm like i'm gonna let you guys get your shit and get going but anyway i did go back in there later in the day cool to find this still and then i also found great copy the vinyl probably more a strong vg to vg plus but this is the, the own own grace. yeah let it yeah no from the <laughs> nuggets era no yeah. love this stuff uh and i grew up my first vinyl records uh that i was even collecting as a vinyl record collector was all that nuggets that psychedelic stuff and uh and I even showed that box that was Simon a few weeks back, the Nuggets 2. So this stuff, very, uh, very special to me. And I, great record here. Yeah. But then, lastly, I wanted to show this. And I haven't listened to this yet. <clears throat> First time I've seen this, I just was intrigued by the cover. This is the... <laughs> yeah. Uh, black it's got it all. It's well, got yeah, it all. Th this is cool. It's right in that alley of like surf and garage. And I'm, you know what? Hey, you, can I just throw it on here? And hopefully Go we ahead. won't get be a first time. I wanted to ask you, is that a Yamaha turntable you have? This turntable is a Stanton ST150. I guess I could. Um, here, you know what? It looks like a Yamaha GT2000, that, that button. It just looks like a big, it looks like a big Japanese turntable, but it's not. Okay, yeah, I know it now. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. So what we got here is... Uh, clock. The Stanton ST150 was basically... Uh, the Technics uh, 1200, ST1200. Yeah. And, um, they, uh, or the SP1200. And they uh, sold the pant, the pant, the Panton to, I'm sorry, I'm not talking tonight very well. It's the, it's the beer in me okay. already. Okay. But uh, they sold the Panton to Stat. <laughs> and they basically, this is a 1200, which is pretty awesome. I, you, you've seen like uh, a lot of people in the VC use a 1200. And yeah. it, it was like an, a DJ standard for, for decades, really, about three decades. And then mm -hmm. uh, it was discontinued for many years, and then they did bring it back. But this, I believe, uh, is kind of like a, a short run of Stanton turntables that use the exact same patent as the 1200. So um, I've actually, when I used to DJ in college, um, I had a lot of friends who were uh, into the 1200, and I would bring my turntables just like, you know, I sometimes I would be the closest person to the to the bar that night. And, you know, just like, you know, they said, like, you know, it feels, you know, very much like my 1200. And then it even has reverse effect on here, too. So, uh, you know, um, you know, it, it, it's, it, it does feel very much like a Techniques 1200. So, right. All right. So, yeah, I know that to answer your question, I'm sort of in, in depth there as much as I can. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I guess I could throw this record on. I mean, I, I did have the theme going on for the Manosphere, and, it, and we we don't have this. It's a loose theme, just to kind of break the ice. But if you guys want to talk about anything else, I, I'm totally cool with that. But uh, no, this is a uh, Stunty actually. Who uh, I guess Stunty dedicated a song to me in his live stream yesterday, and he did. Uh, he did. You know, I, I got to go back and watch it because when people do shit like that for me, it's like you got to go back and and at least acknowledge and say thank you. Which is cool because Stunty and I did kind of you no, know Beetle Babe. No, we wouldn't have a beef. Oh, unless you want to have a beef with me. I was trying to get Beetle Babe to jump up and have a speed date with me, but no, I'm a beef with everybody. You know, <laughs> Beetle Babe I'm actually from Northern California, so no, yeah, we could no. have a few. We could have a few topics in common, but up to you. All right, William, you I was say, gonna hey, say, hey, I want to play that record. What yeah. is what is it sitting on? What's that? Plant, what's that base you have it on? It's like oh, a this. gray felt. Yeah, what's that for? This is just my. Uh, case for the for the uh turntable it's so a I just, travel case yeah travel case for the turntable and i set it on top since i'm a tall guy mm -hmm. uh it is good to have it elevated by you know just like maybe a half a foot so right right uh but and and honestly i just plugged these back in uh maybe a couple months ago and even recently uh going through records and trying to get comfortable DJing and maybe DJ for you guys all again, uh, you know, all over again. Okay. So the thing with the, with the DJ sets is there were people who were getting, uh, uh, like annoyed or they were saying it doesn't sound good. And when I would hear it back, it's like, it doesn't bother me. It's like the lo-fi set, like people like you and me, like you grew up on like AM radio or shortwave radio maybe. 
And like when I was growing up as a kid, my dad would listen to shortwave radio. So when I listen to like my DJ sets that I play for you guys, I love the lo-fi sound. And it's like, I don't need to plug into something that's to, to make it sound, you know, beautiful. Now I realize that like for your, your guys' experience is going to be much better. But I think for the most part, the vinyl community, uh, they, they can appreciate like something more lo-fi sounding, I would think. And, you know, if, who knows to eat his own. Well, and, and you know, uh, like Jason Rojas, his DJ said, he's, uh, it, it sounds, uh, whatever he's hooked to, hooked up to sounds well. Well, he invest he he invested in some inter interface yeah, for the no, turntable. No, that's he that's did research on it, huh? That's basically all I need to get, and I mean it's just like a few hundred bucks. It, it really isn't that much, but it's like when I I mean there are some other expenses I got to take care of right now. Yeah, but uh, you know, in the end, when I was playing records the other day, I I just woke up in the morning and just started throwing some records on, and when I played that back, I'm like, I actually like the sound of that, and I don't know. Excuse me, I don't know that it like getting an interface would, you know, would make it necessarily more or less in, enjoyable. I mean, I think, uh, you know, just the lo-fi sound. I think if if nothing else, uh, I think people, the people who watch me for for the music in the VC would love the lo-fi sort of feel to it. And then if they could check it out on YouTube if they wanted to hear a more clear version of it. So, I mean, this is really. I kind of just feel like when I play records, it is kind of more for exposure or, uh, and also like the other morning was to go through some old 45s that, you know, I hadn't even touched in many years, but. Right, right. So Mike, what do you want to hear? Do you want to hear Cool Keith's sex style or do you want to hear like the hombres? I don't know that you seem I, like. <laughs> I, I want to hear both, but I want to hear Cool Keith's sex style first. Well, okay. Well, here, yeah, no, I, uh, what I got on the turntable here to kick it off was uh, this is called Cool Keith the Erotic Man, and this is like a bootleg version of Sex Style, which I just showed. And uh, Stunty had actually, I don't know if he dedicated a song from this to me from his show, but when I was, we, we were going back and forth, and I think both him and I have a two really unique stories about how we met Cool Keith. So when I was talking to Stunty, that was like a good bonding, you know, Point where you know we could relate to an artist that we love that we've met and I I, I think my cool Keith story is uh I, I've seen him twice I saw him in Seattle and then uh in Omaha when I moved back I had one of my underground rapper buddies open for him and I was like well I can't miss this and yeah. it was super cool because uh right after the show uh, we're all just hanging out uh right outside the venue which is on Maple Street and cool Keith just comes busting out the venue in a cape and he's like running down the middle of the street into traffic and everything. And then he, he runs over to us and he's just like chilling. But no, Cool Keith sex style. Uh, this is the official version. And then I was playing the bootleg version on the turntable when the show was kind of going. So, um, and I think real reason for that is uh, fidelity wise, uh, because this lo-fi sound, it's going to, the, the, the lower fidelity is going to sound better to you guys. A, a, a rare situation where, where that might happen but yeah uh i mean it's a pretty raunchy record i'll play uh we'll play like the first verse you might mike you're probably gonna ask me to take it off i promise you but don't we'll know yet we don't know Here, let me start this one over. You guys ever get a call in the middle of the night? You know, we talk about the red pill and the manosphere. So this, this is the manosphere episode. And I, I do know we might have some viewers from the manosphere here. You know, Sarah the Raging Tomato does have her, you know, speed date with uh, Norman Maslow. I don't know if you guys know much about that. but uh, I'm definitely tuning in for that. You know, I, I was going to say, uh, sounds like it's going to be a load of entertainment. I mean... I was almost just trying to plan a pre-party here, if nothing else. But I mean, it almost sounded like people weren't interested, and like Starks was like not my thing. But at the same time, I've seen Starks sort of do memes on the tomato, and then Davy was even like not my thing. Hey, one moment here. Talk about May December. Yeah, Beetle Babe, how are Hello. you? Hello. 
Welcome to the uh, Pumping Vinyl channel. Uh, we are here talking about the Manosphere tonight. I understand you may have some information on the Manosphere that we may not know of. I'm pretty sure anything I know, you guys have long known before me, but well, I've followed like MGTOW channels for probably the better part of 10 years, even though I'm not even a guy. You watch MGTOW channels. Wow. Uh, I, you know what? I think I'm, I'm a self-hating woman woman. So. What's MGTOW? Oh, you, Men so going their own way. You beat me to the punch there. Serious, that's a thing? That's a it, thing. It's not only a thing, it's like a group it's a whole of movement. People. Yeah. Okay, give me give me give me just the give me the the elevator pitch for men. What is it? Men doing their own thing, going their own thing? So what basically they're tired of women using them for their resources and things, so they're going fuck women. Pump and dump. Yeah, basically. Uh, it, okay. I have a female version of that with other women. It, it's a group of people, it's a mixed philosophy, and it's like people, it's supposed to imply that men work towards, you know, their own wealth and their own right. well-being, but so many people get it confused and be like, you know, fuck women, I'm hanging out here on the internet all day in a chat room. And so to me, that is that is what MGTOW is, is, right. this, is this group on YouTube of people just hanging out in a chat room. Now well, here's where really it the turns career, into the it? other because there's a lot of crossover with the incels and that's where it gets a bad name because they give it the bad name. You're right. You were kind of meeting me at a at a point there, but no, you're you're right. No, there's a lot of negativity to it. Yeah. It, it sort of preaches like it's sort of, sort of a doomer mentality. Is I, I think. Well, is. yeah, it's true. But you know, I I do want to point this out because Davy strange name accused me of being a manosphere channel and i've made a point to never say migtow on my channel i've made I'm it sorry i'm sorry that's so funny i've made it this far and i've never i never <laughs> said migtow beetle babe you actually said, were the first one to ever say it on this channel so hey at least it was a girl and it wasn't me that's that if i count as one but, but, but uh no uh beetle babe welcome to uh the show here, and I, I do want to ask you since you're here. Uh, I, I saw some weird feud going on with Invisible Ray, and I got to be honest, I do stay out of the drama as much as I can, believe it or not. Could you just give me a brief synopsis of what might be going on? Oh God, I never know where things stand with Ray. I mean, this beef has gone on long before the Mayo thing with him. He's been targeting me since like 2015, and I didn't even know who he was when he started that. I was just like, "What the hell did I do to you?" I <laughs> I was gonna say, because I'm a Ringo fan, I must be the stupidest person in the VC to defend his solo career. And I'm like, you know, oh, okay, that's fair. <laughs> I was going to say, he he's a bit obsessed. And like, he's an obsessive point, guy. Yeah, he's very jilted at this point. Let me close this. It's getting too bright, but I'll right. continue that train of thought. Uh, yes, he, uh, um, he drills he down deep and he stays there. I betrayed him. And to some degree, he may be right, but I'm feeling like a half correct half not thing because what he leaves out is he was starting to flip the script before i bounced he was starting to and i was like mm, mm, i don't know about that i was still willing to play with him until the first time i had commented back at mr mayo's and he and martin both jumped on me immediately and i was like Okay, you know, I made my stance known on my channel. We weren't going to talk crap about him. <laughs> no, I gave no Ray friend. a few shots to walk it back, and he didn't. I was like, all right, well, I, I have to be consistent, so I blocked him. Yeah. And Martin kept it up. I blocked him, too. And that's when they decided I betrayed them. I'm like, you know, if they just kept it off my channel, I don't care if they do it on theirs. Just don't do it on mine. Don't get me yeah. in trouble for it, because that was part of the whole peace agreement, which is, by the way, off again now. Uh, <laughs> so it's just like... If it hadn't been for that, I would have still been good with them too. I think, unless they were already planning this beforehand. I don't, I don't know at this point. Okay. I kind of don't care. I'm just like whatever. Okay. I don't well, care. Do you see? Do you see one of Gorilla Reggae's a comment there, Miss Beetlebib? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, so it's really yeah. important that we let pauses happen so we can let other people speak because there's something called Robert's Rules of Order. You know, what, what that people do in meetings with the chairperson and you recognize people in the panel and let them speak and they speak and then there's silence and then the next person speaks. Let's try to do that. I know. I was just giving the just the TLDR yeah. version of the Ray thing was all. And that was the quickest way I could do it. Just get it out there. Boom. Yeah. Done. You're good. But I, I actually do have another question. Well, we don't really have to worry about Invisible Ray. I just do think he's a little bit maybe on the obsessive side. But yeah. let me. 
because but talented the guy is the, you gotta, gotta admit he's super talented his graphics the lead in to his to his show you know his uh his his the way he 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 uh, just goes the way he rambles but you know he's he is he does have racist issues and yep. there are there are things off color that comes out of his mouth that people take issue with and i tend to look for, look the other way and forgive because i find him so incredibly talented there's that and i always kind of gave him a lot of leeway too because i find him funny he makes me laugh even when i'm the target of it he makes me laugh so i'm like you know what go nuts i don't care go for it you know yeah uh he he has some controversial opinions uh I, you can't deny that uh he he can be a funny guy he is a bit of a definitely a vinyl community character and uh okay. you know he he is who he is and i uh support anybody's right to free speech all day um I want to know more about I, I see and I don't follow all this drama. I honestly I get it from the strange name page. And when I saw this Joe Mayo stuff, what's going on here? Which part? The I feed mean, picks. The okay. feed picks. <laughs> that was, my favorite part was that was like the tiniest shred of the original thing that came from. That was never meant to be the focus out of that, but that's the thing they ran with. And now it's like eclipsed what it originally was, even though the original thing in hindsight was kind of a non-issue. And it was on me because I was being an asshole to the form. But like I in the moment, I felt justified in that moment. And before I had a chance to even talk to him or anything, he'd already had his rebuttal over on his channel. So it turned yeah. into a war back and forth overnight, <laughs> literally, because I woke up to it the next day. I was like, well, if this fucker's gonna talk about me, I'm gonna talk about him back, and hence the like. What was it? Three hour <laughs> diatribe. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it escalated from there, and he then said he had a list on me, which I said, "Bring it. Read the list. Do it." <laughs> he didn't. He still has it. He still could. But I'm just like, you know, you want to keep escalating? It? I'll go nuclear with it. I don't give a shit. But. This is stupid to me, but yeah, well, maybe you should do a live stream and invite Ray and have a one to one with Ray. I don't think he has any interest in having anything to do with me again. So real quick, guys, I'm gonna respond to Christopher's comment here. Free speech in Sweden, we say that you are allowed to think anything uh you want, but not say anything you want. That's oh. that's controlled speech what you just described. Yeah there, Christopher. I do want to hold this up real quick. Uh, that's why Sweden is a socialist crap hole. So, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, we don't need to necessarily go down that route, but mm -hmm. no, I, here's what I, here's my firm opinion on free speech is it doesn't always sound pretty. It doesn't, that yeah. is, uh, controlled speech does, or, uh, uh, cancel culture sort of promotes this. Like we need to sort of accept opinions that, uh, make people happy. And that's just not the way people think. And I mean, I've illustrated that enough on my channel. And uh, you know, I and w w one th one reason you see the character that I that I project here on YouTube is is I just want to be a pro proponent for free speech and not necessarily be the guy that everybody loves, but just show people that I'm not afraid to say whatever I want. And then, did you get, if you guys saw uh, when Norman jumped on the, and and PB Thaw jumped on the stream during the troll stream at the end, and they kept trying to ask me what's going on and change uh, like it seemed like they were really trying to change my opinion and it's like i don't know i really felt like i was i was uh i don't know i sort of felt like i was treading well with that kind of stuff because i mean i do kind of feel i think they uh he's one of those guys who may have been accused of you know being on the cancel culture you know side who, I, who, I don't we need to go there who, this is wait, the wait. episode who so who who might have been one of the guys well, okay. Well, we've all seen like Norman, for example, the whole report, 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 and that would be, yes. you know, a, a very, uh, it'd be a core philosophy of cancel culture is like reporting sure. or not allowing someone else to, you know, give their opinion and, you know, that with the okay. whole, and so I, I've covered that enough on my channel. Don't want okay. to really want to go there. So you, you have noticed that <clears throat> YouTube now, when you go to upload, there's a new section that says, does your content uh, appropriate other people's faces or other people's content? You've, you've seen that, right? So mm -hmm. I think that that 
is a result of a lot of complaints that have been happening against YouTube channels because YouTube can't really police that. It's impossible for them. So they had to they had to draw a line in the sand. And their line was, are you appropriating other people's comments? At least tell us so that we can judge what is being complained about. And I think that that is the result of things that have happened. Who is this person? You know, yeah. I, we have so many fake accounts. So I know who it is. You, you know who it is, too. And I, honestly... I don't. I really don't. Because I'm you could tell me... No, you could I'm tell not, me, and, and there's no proof of who it is. I'll send you a message. I don't want to... I I want I don't want to dox people necessarily, but I mean, uh, okay. Let me read it here. William loves to censor his critics. Completely untrue. Um, there are people who have accused me of shadow banning them. I don't know what's going on. There are accounts when people leave comments. I don't see them for a few days. Uh, for some reason, the six Beatles comments were not showing up on my page, and oh. like I would get a notification that he would leave it, and then I would go to check it, and I couldn't even read it. So I don't know what's going on on my channel. Uh, there are some comments that it does appear people are leaving them, and I have been accused. Uh, Herkimer One told me that I was—I've never blocked Her Herkimer One, but then when I went back and I watched the troll stream, none of Herkimer One's comments show up in my chat, even though like in the one-hour point in the in the troll stream is like the his the peak moment where he he trolled me, and I'm like I was go I went back to read his comment, it wasn't even there anymore. So I don't know what's going on at YouTube. Okay. I think I got an answer, okay? Because because Six Beetle was was complaining that his comments were disappearing on Marius's channel, and I think yeah. that certain accounts, when they have com enough complaints about them, that they're on, they're kind of like the algorithm or whatever it is has them on a hair trigger, and it it removes their um, their comments it's more like quickly a shadow than ban. usual. Yeah. yeah, shadow banning. There you go. Well, it, that's it, what's it, no, and I get it. I mean, it's YouTube and it's their own platform. They can do whatever they want. I mean, what I don't like is how it is does it does reach a point where it it does sort of like hinder free speech altogether. But yeah, if you have your channel and you don't like a certain troll and you want to say I don't want this ever this troll ever to be visible on this channel ever again, you fine. Welcome. But it's also like it does sort of make you look like a bit of a coward, maybe, or like you can't handle. I don't know. I'm a little bit more thick skin than people, though I have been accused of not being. But uh, I mean, I, I would like to think like there's live streams where I go a whole entire you know hour, two hours with the trolls just going back and forth. I'm like, I'm fine. I mean, I, I've had trolls say very insulting things to me here even recently. And it's just like comments are comments. And I would rather read people's uh, real thoughts. What, what people real. And one thing that I said to Norman Maslov maybe a month ago or so is mm -hmm. uh I love the trolls because the trolls are honest. And Norman says, the trolls are not honest. And I say to him, well, what do you mean? The trolls say exactly what's on their mind. They might not necessarily be right, but they're being honest with you and you know exactly what they think. It's like, that's you can't get any better constructive criticism than a troll. And what was his response to that? Speechless. Right. <laughs> okay, so, you know, I mean, but he has a persona he has a brand and a persona that he wants to uh, keep going, right? And and people trolling him doesn't really work with his work with his brand. Michael I don't make troll base. I didn't make normal. See, I don't know who this is. I don't know. I don't know who this is either. Let me. Uh, we gotta see uh, who we got here. See, I don't know who this is. G give me just one moment here. Do, do you know? Have you ever heard of David Normal Name Beetle Babe? No. All I know, all I know, is that this fellow or this man or woman is using Davy Strange Names um, right. image for his own site. And yeah. That's it. Uh, real quick, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I did it too to start the you show. You got me. It seemed like Davy. Oh, was oh, the oh, oh well, I hey, genuinely I wondered you if you were Davy before. Why do people call you Taper? Okay, so that actually, that is my Manosphere name, to be real honest with you. Is when I came over, my name was, okay, my, my real name is William Vincent, my first and middle name, and then my last name is Burton. So I just gave away, not the first time I've done that, but no, that is my first first and last name. And then um, when I was in the, 
manosphere. I was, just, I was just, I wasn't really in the manosphere. I was just in this one group and I sort of had this manosphere nickname that I made up for myself. So what I, William V taper was my manosphere name and a V a V taper is supposed to be a guy with broad shoulders and a six pack. And even though I was like at many times, just like so close to it, I just thought it would be a funny nickname for the show. And that's really, it's sort of, so Sarah, the tomato calls me taper, but everyone nice. here calls me William, the flipper. And that, and William the Flipper is actually, if I had to tell you, I was trying to eliminate William V Taper, and then Davey made that video calling me William the Flipper, and I just ran with that name. So gotcha. that is the exact story. <laughs> well, no one can say you're not flexible. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no. See, so uh, Davey, normal name. I, I, I'm pretty sure this is probably. Huh. Stevie. <laughs> It's got to be stunty, but uh, babe, you know who Davy Strange name is? Oh, I don't know who's behind it, but I've I've suspected if it was William before. Uh, no, I mean, do, do you know the channel, Davy Strange name? Oh, of course. Okay, okay. Oh, no, Beetle Babe's all over the Strange Name page. Yeah. Way, way more than me, but uh, no, I, I'm I'm making some appearances. Hold on, hold on one second here. We got no fake BB. It was me being an asshole. <laughs> We got DJ Trish. I was, well, so with it. I was like, no, they're going to call me crazy. I will play the role of crazy and I will have fun with it. <laughs> you know, I, I like a lot of Davy's ideas. I think sometimes they can be a little confusing. And then even, yeah. the, I don't know Agreed. if you saw his t-shirt series, but he, he dedicated. They're a little confusing. They're little, for me, they're a little confusing. You know, and I think really it's just, he's letting his ideas flow. And I, I, yeah. I want to say, it, probably don't need to look into it too deep. But I think it's very the one thing that I like about him is he doesn't ever take a side, you know. Sure. It, like he takes he, he's neutral in case he has to make a parody on someone that you know he might like or you know. Mm. And I mean, I, I I've seen him sort of you know support like George Borden, perfect example, mm. made a video and a supportive video on him. So you yeah. know, it, it's just uh, you know it's interesting and it does sort of. Uh, you know, I'm I'm trying to understand it half the time myself. But when I when I was I will say when I was accused of being a man manosphere channel, I took offense to that. So, but it's it's all good. <laughs> but uh, anyways, DJ Trish, welcome. Uh, don't let the trolls get you down, Beetle Babe. Well, that's oh, why you're here. Um, you're here with. The they really don't bother me. They bother somebody that I now have no more ties with. So. <laughs> no, I I think, I think the trolls get bothered more than anything. In, in yeah, America. I think so. That's why I'm like. Stay mad. I don't give a shit. Well, do you, wait, can you put that back? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, put that one back again. Oh, yeah, here. Just had a, yeah. Sit, who is this? Oh, no, 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 no. It was Ricey. Oh, Ricey. Okay. Who is. Who's better, Virgil Van Dyke? Who? I think David is. God. I think this is you. I think this is you, William. It is. Do I look like I'm typing anything right now? David Norman is stunty. Huh? I bet you anything, it's stunty. I mean, I mean who, he's got to point you'd be knows? hearing typing. Who knows? It's so annoying. Yeah, it? It's just so I, annoying. I'll be real honest. I actually, the other day, I was going to create, okay, this is going to be on Dobbs. I was about to create a, a troll account, uh, Fred Dobbs' girlfriend. It was a female gorilla. <laughs> and I was going to troll Dobbs with that account. And then YouTube won't let me make any more troll accounts. Oh, no. So, yeah. no. So the, Did you the, try the VPN route? There's an idea for someone if you would feel like trolling Dobbs. But anyway, do you, do you guys want to hear? Let, let me play another selection out off of sure. Cool Keith's sex style. So, you know, uh, Beetle Babe, have you ever heard this record before? Do you know much about it? No, I've never heard of it. So this is Cool Keith, uh, rapper from the Ultra Magnetic MCs. And this is his first solo record, which okay. actually came out right before Dr. Octagon. Do you know what Dr. Octagon is? No. <laughs> Well, it's arguably the greatest hip hop record of all time. Wow. I, uh, you're uh, uh, a huge hip hop fan, but shout out to my favorite troll. Is Mayo coming up to expose it? Well, he's more than welcome. The StreamYard link is in the chat. Uh, and I will put it. Because he doesn't want to be camera. seen on screen with me ever again because it's bad for his image. So. Oh, well, I, I, I'd say you got you got to own you got to own it sometimes. But you know, yeah. we're gonna play another passage from Cool Keith's sex style, if you don't sure. mind here. And uh, let, let me chat while I get the song queued up here. Okay. For what it's worth, if we have no beef, I just unblocked you from my channel. So me? I thought we had beef. So yeah, you. 
Oh, okay. Okay. No, I know you no can't voice. stand the sound of my voice anyway, but like <laughs> I, I unblocked you anyway. So guys, There's nothing I, I can do about that. Real quick, I uh if you don't mind, I want to keep you on the screen, but uh um I'm gonna play this song here, but I there is a setup to this. So we are talking about the manosphere and we're talking about like uh you know, certain scenarios you might get yourself into and that it's like, you know, you might get a late phone call late at night. And I want to know if any of you here watching, we got about maybe 45, 50 viewers here at the moment. Holy shit. I, I know. I mean, talk about Manosphere and we Where's got people wrong? here. And, uh, and I mean, we're having a wild conversation here. But well, it's about to get a little bit more raunchy, guys. Uh, is the wax here? Is the wax, is the wax here? I bet the wax <laughs> right now. Ooh, I'd fact, love it if he came up and joined us. Oh, uh, he's more than welcome. I just posted the Streamyard link, but yeah. uh, you know what? I want to play this and let me know if anybody in the chat watching this wax if you can relate. Uh, this is a late night phone call, and you know sometimes we we get some of those. But anyway. Come to your house, blonde hair boots. Tell her rent a cheap room on Sunset Boulevard for sixteen ninety five. I ain't trying to get no laundry, not no Marriott or all that hot stuff. But yo, we can go on cheaper, man. I know something for like ten ninety nine. It's a hotel with a gym and everything. Thought it was named Skid Row. What make it? Girls walk sunset with their ass out. I saw Cadillacs with suits with my ass out. With rims tilted, I think I put the whole block. Make streets with wigs and put the rubbers on my top. You see me out there with big boys. All right, yeah, we're talking about right. one of the easiest hip hop albums ever. Did you did you guys hear that phone call? Okay. Yeah. Are we gonna dissect? Should we dissect the call? No, no that was that. That's actually uh, from the record. Uh, but I was. Has anybody ever had a late night call like that? Beetle Babe, have you a ever booty had a call? call? A booty yeah. call. When I was younger, sure. 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 Okay. But like, how yeah. late? Late are we? Are we talking about Michael? We're talking three a.m. Oh, okay. Know? Like late. No, that's a very late booty call, Michael. Yeah, well, you know, you know. You know, I mean, there. I, I, I got to say, and let, before I put in my thoughts here, Beetle Babe, uh, what would you say is like, I mean, you, you said you've gotten a phone call like that before, okay. maybe a time or two. Okay. What would be like too late for you? Like you, it's a certain point in the night and you're getting that phone call and you're just like, you know, who Sounds like it's going to be fun. But... Me, Brian, fuck that. I want to sleep. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, here's my opinion. Now, I was a bartender, and you know, and this this was about a year ago. And when you're a bartender, you you pick up on these rules very quickly. Now, when I was in my early 20s, I did not know these rules very well at all. So there's there's uh, you got to think of it this way: when when it hits 10 o'clock and you don't have your date yet for the night, when you go up to a woman at that point you become the most desperate person in the room. So you got to know your cutoff point really is, is 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. And so, reasonable. and you got to think like nine o'clock hour, you, you still got some time there. It, it, you're, you're getting into the red zone a little bit, but I mean, if you're just, I mean, it's still early enough in the evening where if you, you hit it off, you have a good conversation and you just have a few drinks and a, and a good friendly conversation, I think you're still good to go. But the, the thing that I want you to keep in mind is when the clock starts to hit four digits, 
that is the that is the no zone. And, and I'm saying, if you don't have your date by 10 o'clock at night, you may as well go home because you're starting to look desperate. And you might have some luck, but typically the only luck you're going to have is with another desperate person. And that's just my two cents and my observations over the years. But the other thing I wanted to say, it, it's the four-digit rule. Once it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, definitely the red zone. But when once 1259 hits into 1 o'clock and you still got that one to two hour, that is... That is the, uh, that's no longer the red zone. That's the danger zone. So if anyone approaches you after one o'clock, run. That's my advice. I've hung up on those before. So. And that, that's bartender rule there. So <laughs> I don't know. I sort of just made that up too. <laughs> but uh, isn't Raging Tomato a bartender as well? I'm sorry? Isn't Raging Tomato, Sarah, isn't she a bartender as well? Uh, she may have had some experience. I don't think she still does it. I think she has more of one of like those, you know, she's more of a professional, unlike me. I'm still trying to get back into bartending, you know, if I can. But uh, okay, you know, I, 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 don't got, know. I, I thought from her from her dialogue with other women that she was a bartender. No, I know, I know the Saturday night thing that she does is like a sip and stream, and I think she has had bartenders. I mean, yes. my, myself included. But uh, which, by the way, you know this whole Saturday theme. Speaking of bartending and drinks. Anybody, whatever you're drinking, let me know. I got the Modelo, Mo Modelo going on it. Do you have it? Either of you have a drink of choice? It is early morning here, William. So I'm, you know, we'll, I mean, just, have to, have we'll just have to pretend that I'm that I'm drinking a tall oh, yeah. boy. Well, whatever you drink later in the evening, say like 7 p.m., 8 p.m., which is my time, we'll, we'll say that we dr we we had a drink together. Absolutely. You, you do you have do you drink a lot of sake then? Uh, I do drink sake. I drink wine. I drink beer. Okay. Uh, yeah. So what? I'm not a stranger. Tell me what what's it, I, I've had some Japanese beers. I don't get you know. Obviously, you don't have them available to me. As, they, as they're light. They're like they're like Corona. Japanese beers. The best way I can describe them are like Corona beer. They're light right. ales. Okay. You know, and they do have they do have dark beers here, um, and they have a lot of microbreweries. That's big. That's a big thing here. Uh, craft beer is really spiking here. But, you know, the typical, you know, salary man, you know, 20 or something, he's drinking, you know, um, Kieran or Sapporo, which is very much like a Corona beer. But yeah, okay. No, I I, I feel like uh, it remind the one Japanese beer that I had, I don't don't remember the name, but it had a, it reminded me of Dos Equis, which is a Mexican beer too. So yeah, I know I, it. it would make sense, you know, but uh, Beatles Babe or Beetle Babe, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I call you Beatles, babe. I don't know why I do I know, because the trolls do it, so it's fine. Well, I'm a troll. Um, I did I did things backwards. Most people start out with beer and work up to other things. I started out on the harder stuff, and I am very, very new to beer. Like, within the past month or so, I've never been a beer drinker. Okay. So, but, I mean, my drink of choice is usually sherry or, like, red wine, personally. Oh, wow. Okay, so you're you're a wine drinker. And yeah, I, I mean, I start out with cognac originally when I was first of drinking age until I got yeah. really sick off of that once, and that's all it took. And mm, I can't even smell it anymore. Right. There was vodka for a while. There was Jack Daniels for a while. It's like I've somehow worked downwards from the harder stuff. I was gonna say, you no, know, you're you're throwing out some some names there that some of those uh, drinks I tend to avoid. Yeah, I do now. <laughs> Yeah. When I was younger, well. <laughs> it was like impossible to get me hung over. Now it does not take much. So I stay away from the stronger stuff and usually stick to lighter. Well, um, you know, I was going to ask you, I was going to maybe throw another song on. I was going to maybe throw that uh, Ombre's record. But you have, I mean, since we're talking about, you know, dating and relationships and heartbreak, maybe, do you have any songs that come to mind that maybe you find relatable? Like, is there a Beatles song? Now, the other thing is about that is playing a Beatles song on this channel oh, is a sure way to get your channel taken down. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. unless you nuke the stream immediately after, I've found as a workaround. But okay, well, yeah, <laughs> and actually, by the way, know that uh, Saturday Night Live sketch is called "Not Getting Any." Okay, because like, oh, I like that. I know he I like was that. that. I was like, yeah, High, highly underrated SNL sketch, but. Okay. Uh, no, this, and it came from, I had the box set when I was in high school, and it was on the best of Chris Rock, but even though Chris Farley is like the star of the sketch anyway, but it is just so funny because uh, 
I mean, it, it reminds me like when I was in a, a, like a dorky high school kid, me and my friends would just be sitting there in the room like, why aren't any girls talking to us? And then we watch that not, not getting any sketch. I'm like, dude, that's us. <laughs> But I mean, it, it is most very people true. in high school. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah, no that that little panel of people is uh, it, it's very true to a lot of male groups around the world. Uh, probably <clears throat> in the community even. I'm gonna say not just males necessarily. <laughs> oh no, yeah, you're 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 right. You know, I you know, Beetle Babe, you don't seem like you have too much trouble there, though. I would say, right? Wrong. When I was younger, I had a lot more trouble than when I was in high school. No one wanted come near me with a 10 foot pole so it's just like I yeah i don't blame them i hadn't figured out anything with makeup had bad acne all i just i don't blame them i wouldn't have dated me so. oh hey you know i i know those guys who uh they like a cute girl with some acne you know i mean sometimes acne uh can work out for you in, in, a, in a positive way but i mean i'm not picky you know but Mike, did you have an, uh, a, a record in mind? Or a... I, well, you don't have it. I probably you don't have it, but I just want to cite. Uh, I know how it feels to be lonely by uh, sung by Bonnie Bramlett of Blaney Bonnie. And oh. if you ever come across, if you have a chance to stream this song, <clears throat> I know how it feels to be lonely. I mean, it is just she. It she just does an amazing rendition of this song. And when it comes to heartbreak songs, um. I prefer women women singers, female singers. Mm -hmm. Somehow they just they just bring it, you know, for yeah. the uh, for being jilted or you know being kicked out or you know what have you. Um, you know, there there are some heartbreak songs from the seventies, especially like mid seventies, that are just to me they're like super cringe. Like uh, the Harry Nilsson song really is hard for me to listen to. Which one? Yeah. Which one? Uh, the one where I can't live without you or something like yeah, yeah, it, yeah. That's, it's just called without you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's just like, uh, it, it just never is like, I've never been in the mood to listen to that. I guess right. I'll say. it kind of rips at your heartstrings, no matter what mood you're in. So. I know you're in a good mood and you hear that song. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> I was in a good mood. <laughs> But, I mean, uh, there was um, a monkey song called while I cry from later in uh, their career. Kind of like that too, actually. Oh, Arnie, you crack me up. You guys hear that okay? Yes. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry about a sewer sign, hot dog, a razor broke, water dripping up the spout, but I don't Yeah, it's very familiar. Hanging from a pine tree by my knees, sunshine through the shade. Nobody knows oh, what it's all about. Man. It's too much, man. Let it all hang out. So this is a recent find from the record show last Sunday. I think I paid a dollar for this, but used to have a really nice copy. Now I got another nice copy right back. So cool that that this was still hanging out after uh, at the end of the show after everybody had gotten their greasy little hands on it. But. It's really familiar. What's that? It's really familiar. The song is to me. It's really familiar. Yeah, no, this song was on that first Nuggets box set, which, you know, yeah. all those songs were super huge hits. But uh, real quick, uh, Dave Pounds, uh, watch out, Beetle Babe. William may try to speed date you. Well, what do you think about that, uh, Beetle Babe? I don't do the speed date thing. <laughs> you know, speed dates? Okay, well, you know, I was going to say, if you wanted to have a speed date, I mean, this is part of what the show is about, you know. We could have a little fun. This is the Manosphere episode, so we're trying <laughs> new things here. <laughs> but, you know, I just, you know having a sense of humor about it. If you want to have a speed date, I'm down for it. I'm not sure I've seen any of the VC speed dates. I don't really know how they work. I think it's kind of why I'm intimidated. I don't know. It's kind of like a one-to-one. -one, it's like a one-to-one, -one, like, get to know you um, dialogue between two people. Um, no, wait. It's not, and, and then people people judge how the dialogue went. And they tell, they, they typically tell the man, uh, you were too this or too that. So they critique it. So, but did either of you is, watch the Rachel's Ghost speed dates? I I'm still pretty new over there too. So I mean, I don't think I've seen one. So no, uh, it was <clears throat> like right when I shit right when I started to blow up in the V blow up in the VC. Uh, Sarah yeah. the Rachel Tomato was like right at the right, right at the same time went on to Rachel's Ghost. So she sort of blow up before before I did. In many, in many ways, but the very next day they had the speed date episode where they had uh, 
uh, Johnny L, The Wax did a little bit in there. I think Harry's Music Room. And then uh, AGK had a speed date, which I can't lie. When he showed up and he was wearing this really cheap looking suit, I thought it was the funniest thing in the world. It was funny. Oh, and this was yeah. all with Sarah. You got to give the background. It was a speed date with Sarah. Yeah, Each no. One of them went up to bat. You follow? Yeah. So it was kind of this round robin thing. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was entertaining. It was something new for the vinyl community, but it was really just a one-time thing. It's nothing I've ever done on my channel. So, and I've done some speed dates. I, I had a really embarrassing speed date here uh, a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago today even. But uh, part of why I do it on her channel is to sort of give the VC something to laugh at. And, you know, no matter wh what my performance is, someone is going to diss me or or say that's no way you talk to a woman and uh sometimes you know i will throw out you know i might throw out a comment like that just to uh see uh yes, see how but william, have but william but william remember you're on camera and they're not oh and that's and, a and, go on, and going on camera takes guts oh yeah well, and then plus, like, I mean, these are YouTubers. That, one of them has, like, 13,000 subs. I'm sitting here at 400 subs. Part of the reason why I'm doing this is, like, I mean, I've had a lot of live viewers here recently in the last few months. And it's, like, it helps my confidence to, you know, be be on screen with the YouTuber who has that sort of experience themselves. So it's not to reach out and try and get a relationship or a real-life date with any of these people. But it's, like, you know, it make you guys laugh <laughs> and, and uh, uh you know get some exposure on my, my channel we got uh, some jitter happening there are you guys got still here I, I sort of cut out there for a second but uh <laughs> yeah now you're it, better now you're better as but, long as we're back and running this, were, okay cut, so, cut, cut, cut. yeah so arnie says everyone's waiting for mazzy speed day to hear his dialogue not that everyone wants to see his <laughs> Hold on. No, but Arnie. <laughs> Arnie is one of those know. things that you got to read. You know, Ar Arnie's, Arnie's king of snark, king, king troll here, here we got here today. So thank you for being here, Arnie. But uh, no, uh, do we have any opinions, thoughts uh, on uh, Mazzy's appearance on the Tomato Channel tonight? Should be very interesting. I guess. We only just subbed to her today. I've never seen her before, but everyone's been talking about her lately. So I feel like I should be watching her. You know, it, she's an interesting character. I mean, it, it's um, it's interesting to see the vinyl community, you know, take interest to her. I guess I'll say. I, you know what I find really fascinating is, um, is you know, she has this this world of raging tomato with the manosphere doing her her thing, interviewing authors, right, bringing on you know, um, bringing in you know therapists and things like that, professional people. And then, you know, you have these people coming on, they go, I'm with the VC. And I'm sure her audience is going like, what the fuck is VC? What are you, what are you talking about? What is this? Is that like a disease? You know, there's this like assumption that people like they, 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 they take themselves too seriously in this VC world. It's like, it's like a gnat's dick. It's so tiny you know, in in the sphere of things on YouTube, right? So, you know, it just happened to get a toehold over at Sarah's, probably yeah. due to you, William. I mean, well, you you basically are responsible for connecting the VC to Raging Tomato. You're, you're not wrong. I'm not uh, wrong. But I, I will have to say this is uh, Rachel took an especial appreciation to Sarah that has nothing to do with me. So well, there's a real girl. She's a cute right. girl. You know, her whole thing is, oh my God, you yeah. know, here's the here's here's the genetic female on my show. And it's well, not that makes it's me not feel better. Food. It wasn't just me she did that with because I was like, it, does she always <laughs> do that? Or is this like always. should I be self-conscious? Always. Okay, always. okay. Always. So um it's part of the act. Okay. Real, uh David Normal Name says uh, she wants money and that's it. Stop simping. So there has been accusations that maybe Tomato is getting paid. I don't know if that's true or not. I know getting paid by who for what? She's making four hundred something subs. She can't be monetized yet. Right. Well, you're exactly right. Well, and uh, Stark has actually made, you know, has sort of alluded that she might be getting paid, and I'm like, I know her for sure. 
Um, I I could send her a message and ask her that question, and I'm pretty sure she would say the answer is no. But I mean, it, it is an interesting perspective how she kind of you know she does seem like a grifter in in a lot of ways, and a lot of times grifters sort of uh, make money on the side. You know, she she does like the vinyl community audience, and the people who come to watch her do find entertainment. For example, like David Donnelly likes going on her show and I'll go on her show to support her. But to be real honest, um, going on her show uh, regularly and getting in the habit of that is a good way to, uh, um, it's a good way to stay single. I'll say. Well, she's kind of like, a, she's kind of like playing the role of like life coach. That's how I, that's how I take her channel. Here's the thing with, with that. A lot of these YouTube red pill manuscript content creators try to play this role, role of life okay. coach. Most life all of coach. them fail. Most all of them fail horribly. Well, so, not take a lot of experience to be a life coach. You have to have had professional success to yeah. be a life coach, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, see, I I love my I love my chat. I love my chat because great commenters i know it's like sometimes i can even do my live stream not even read the chat and the stream and then just go back and read and it's just like comedy for a good hour there i'm gonna bring a new guy here we have from the manosphere guys uh first time on the pumping vinyl channel we have siege d is that am i am i saying that right yeah you're saying it right well welcome to the channel i think you might be a friend of glenn lawrence am i wrong yeah, that's my pastor, Pastor Producer Glenn Lawrence. Oh, can, okay. can you say your name? Can you say your name again? Yeah, it's basically my initials C J D, and I combine C J together. It's basically Siege D. Gotcha. Oh, oh Siege, like Siege has S I E G E. Yeah. yeah. Didn't I, I see you? Siege. Didn't you? Weren't you like? Um, weren't? Didn't you do some videos with um, with the Oracle guy? Uh, anything that I've uh, on, on stream has usually just been on Glenn's channel or Raging Tomatoes channel. Okay, but yeah, is there a based was there? Is there a reason why you want to you don't want to come on camera? Hmm? Uh, well, I'll just keep um uh, uh, my uh, self uh, hidden uh, for a little uh, bit unless there's a rule or anything. No, but it just you know it's kind of off putting um, to talk to a a circle that's like vibrating and you know there's no. It's just a voice, and there's no, there's no person. Well, and then also, to to Mike's point, uh, I mean, we're all showing our face and having a lovely time. I mean, if you don't want to, we're not forcing you to. But uh, you know, we 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 just, you know, that's part of the pumping vinyl channels. We like to see everyone, and you know. Well, you got a problem with greyhounds? We experience when people do that. Got a problem with what? You got a problem with greyhounds? Huh? No. Do you have a problem with greyhounds? Not at all. No, I don't have a, I love dogs. Not, I don't not an issue dogs about dogs. Now. It's not just an dog. issue. It's just it just makes me uncomfortable to talk to a voice. I'll be right back, guys. Oh yeah, it's kind of a lot, but here, let me see. Uh let me see. I know I don't have a um, a vinyl uh, stuff, but I do have a lot of CDs. And uh, when my um my granddad, my nano uh uh passed away, uh he left me a bunch of CDs like Audio Slave, um what else? Um, a lot of seventy stuff. But he was a huge Beatles fan, by the way. But here, <laughs> let me see. I'm gonna get over to my music room real quick. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Was you. <laughs> Who is Vilification Soup's mom? Yeah, let me see. Is oh. it Arnie too? I think it's the host. Okay, I thought I thought Arnie was all this vilification, well, which, anyway. which are almost as funny as the real Arnie. But it's like, I almost feel like Arnie's got to go out of character, out of his own character to do the vilification stuff. I don't know, though. Just my just my observation. Well, anyways, I just uh, uh, hope you don't mind me just coming on uh, here. But yeah, I uh, kind of uh, mostly just do a lot of Red Pill uh, content, mostly uh, support our uh, people. I think um, I just, Sarah has put out said that I got an uh, uh, to kind of link her up with Glenn Lawrence, and I think it's uh, pretty good. I've mostly been uh -huh. watching Glenn's channel for a little bit, but I just want to say, sure. guys, um, I was able to find, uh, let's see, well, he called himself Godzilla at the time, but basically pumping vinyl right uh, here. And bro, I'm loving this music uh, uh, talk. It is absolutely uh, nice, and it's good to just get away from this whole RP uh, content or this whole Manosphere stuff. And mm -hmm. George Bruno says it's out. 
a man's fear. I don't like saying it because it sounds like a gay nightclub. <laughs> You're exactly <laughs> right, man. I, I, George Porton say that? You know, they got to come up with a good name, though. I, or I don't know, the Manosphere. It does sound really tacky. Like, I, I, I'll tell you this. I would never go around town telling people that I watch Manosphere content. Sort of yeah. like when, when Beatles Babe said, uh, mentioned MGTOW. I was like, wow, dude, that's the first time that's ever been said on my channel. So, yeah. I think it needs hyphens. Manosphere. <clears throat> yeah, well, that's what <laughs> I, I, like that. That. I like that. I like yeah. that one, Mike. Like, yeah, one of the base guys calls it, um, Rich Cooper calls it the Mano Swamp because it's just diluted with a bunch of uh, uh, knucklehead people. And well, it's his fault. <laughs> he's, he's basically responsible for it becoming a swamp anyway. But I anyway. know. I mean, he was responsible for making uh, Rule Zero, one of the biggest um, uh, collabs uh, over there. You know, but, honestly, my honest opinion on the red pill, I think it's played out entirely. And the other thing about the red pill, okay, so before before I got into the YouTube red pill, the whole blue pill, red pill was, an, was a Matrix analogy from that movie. Right. The Matrix Correct. The late That's how I knew it. Yeah, and, and so that philosophy or that it can be plugged into about anything. It's like if you're a conspiracy theorist, you're considered to be red pilled. So it's like if you think that Lee Harvey Oswald murdered JFK – you're blue pill, but if you think it was somebody else and you spent, you know, many times, you know, you've read several books on it, that's called being red pill. So that is like the red pill, blue pill. It's like the red pill is the truth pill. The blue pill is staying within the matrix. And, you know, it, the ignorance is bliss pill is, is what I guess I could say. But when you're talking YouTube red pill, it's like you really are – you. You basically tell people that you got this information from one place. I don't know. I mean, it, it does become obvious that, you know, the, the YouTube red pill comes from one area only, in my opinion. But I don't know. Well, yeah, and I think the problem is uh, with this space. Like, I've been dealing with a lot of other uh, sub, uh, sub guys in this uh, space called the black pill doomer uh, guys. And <laughs> And they're basically a bunch of looks matchers and uh, guys. I'm not going to say a name that Raging uh, Tomato has debated and is just constantly trolling her uh, channel and sending his trolls over to there. But just essentially is they literally take everything literally, not seriously, but just literally. Yes, looks do play a part in uh, to, um, um, attracting uh, the opposite uh, gender, but they're not everything. And so no. they just go straight full um like autistic spectrum on yeah. stuff. A uh, real quick siege. I want to read Dave what Dave Pound says here because I've made this point many times. So uh this is basically when the Raging Tomato show it's like God like midnight and you have eight to ten people still hanging out on there. So Dave Pound says the idiot men on that show probably have a hard time getting anything. And that's like that's the funny thing is so many of these like new red pill people I see on these panels sometimes like every day, every day of the week, sort of late into the night. And it's like, how, how and why should I believe, you know, what you, your thoughts and your advice on women in relationships when I see you on, on a stream every night of the week or close to it, it's like, you're almost giving off that. Like you are not a good source of advice. That you're housebound. So, yeah, no. And that's the thing. And this is one thing that I will agree on the waxed. Because he said this on the Rachel show is these guys go up there, they act like they know everything, and you can just tell they're they're just pulling shit out of their ass. And it's like, I mean, well, when I can be said, this can be said for guys talking about listening to music when they're on live streams, you know, three to four hours a day, seven days a week. Yeah, and they have supposedly have jobs. I mean, how are you going to absorb and listen to music so that you can form an opinion? So I kind of draw the same analogy. I mean, look, basically, spending too much time on live streams is not good for you. Okay, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> and uh, somebody said it's not good for creativity. Like we're we're spending so many so much time on live streams that we don't even have time to listen to our own records. Well, that was, I, uh, that was, that was my point. Yeah, no, I I I've, I've even found myself like, gosh, you know, I mean, I live streaming and trying to keep, but also trying to keep up with you guys. I do it to be nice to you guys. I want to see what, you know, what people are saying and, you know, watch every, try and keep up with everyone's new video. 
Okay. I mean, Mike, you're giving me a weird look for that. <laughs> well, you've just been too nice. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, but you're being too nice. I, I get so many comments, as, as many haters as I have. I get a lot of positive comments, and I tr especially the people who keep up with me and say nice things. I try and you know give it back to them and show them, you know. Yeah, I see that. I mean, look, yeah. you. Uh, I will give you kudos. You adapt. I mean, you definitely rewind. Take a look at what happened. You rewind. You correct mistakes and you adapt. I give you uh, total props for that, right? But you know, it's it it does. I mean, this like too much of it is not a good thing. Okay. Oh yeah, no, it, it's good for everyone to take a little break and and honestly. This live stream, I almost didn't go live tonight just because I was like kind of getting into ex exhausted from doing all these live streams and going on, uh, you know, uh, probably like a good four or five of them this week. And it's just like, gosh, do I keep doing this every single day? But, uh, you know, it, it is good to take a break and, um, you know, maybe maybe one day a week and then, you know, catching up with everybody else is kind of the best way to go, in my opinion. Right. Aren't you going to fairs and stuff and... Aren't you reselling records? Isn't that your stock yeah. and trade? It's it's that time of year. No, I just had that record show this past Sunday, and then Des Moines, and then St. Joseph, which I did talk about on my channel. But like, yeah, even even right now, uh, the most recent Omaha one, which typically is an easy two thousand bucks, even this past one was a very tough show, and and it's like, even uh, in, in uh, last couple of years, they've had this event after Record Store Day. And after Record Store Day, everyone spent their money and they've all gone and bought their overpriced, you know, Taylor Swift record or whatever. But <laughs> and we would have the event one week after Record Store Day and then we're like, well, we're not getting very much money or whatever. Well, this this year they had it like three weeks before Record Store Day. And I don't know. I can't explain the record economy right now, but I'm not selling records like I used to. And this right. is since the start of January, like. January, February, March into April are supposed to be my selling months, and it's just not where it's at. Are like your, pr it's, your it's, prices it's, your prices are lower end, right? I I mean, yeah, yeah. You would like I mean, to I'm not going to sit here and say I I would say I have a pretty mid range uh, Discogs account at this point. All my rare stuff, either rare stuff has already sold, or I have actually a few boxes of rare stuff that I don't want to sell right now because. Uh, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's like part of it is like I do enjoy doing this for personal, you know, for my own personal enjoyment. And, well, and hey, well, hey Gorilla, uh, Gorilla is, um, I know you've revealed your name, but is um, there a link to like your vinyl store uh, in on your channel? It's pumping vinyl, all one word on, on Discogs. So, mm -hmm. and if you're yeah. not the vinyl, I have CDs and like, you know, I mean, I... It, I would encourage anybody who's interested in supporting me. Yeah, you know, just get a box, little box CDs for the car, and say, "Hey, I came through and supported you." If you want to want me, but the other thing I, I, I do, or the other thing I don't do, is I don't think I've ever asked anybody to go support me on Discogs, or maybe I have. I don't know, but I'm never, never really like. Yeah, but your um, the channel, about it. I, your store is linked uh, to your uh, your channel, right? It is not. No, there is no link to my okay. store on my channel. Because kind of if if you're on uh, here um, and trying to gain uh, viewers and try to uh, network with people and be able to get more people watching your stuff, then yeah, it also kind of benefits uh, for them to be able to know where your store is. Now, right. the downside of well, that, though, is kind of that you may get a lot of trolls and you may get a lot of people that kind of know a little bit more about your information and know where your store is. So it's kind of like a trade off. And he doesn't yeah. have a physical well, store, though. But I don't think you can. I don't think you can post a link to a. Um, to an outside site on a YouTube channel. YouTube really polices that. Oh, really? You, I think I just I just posted the link to my Discogs in, in the chat. So if you want to check it out, you may. I, I don't, you're not obligated to buy anything from me or support or, but you know, I mean, one cool thing about doing a Discogs account on, uh, on YouTube is I, there's this whole concept of super chats on YouTube on live streams or whatever. And I think yeah, it'd be pretty cool to get something for me on Discogs because then, you could like sort of in a way super chat me, but then I send you something in return. And I think that's way better than a super chat. If you ask me, but yeah, um, like, you have like a huge amount of, um, of records in your house. Like, are you kind of have a surplus amount, something that you just want to get rid of? 
All right. So what we're sitting behind right now, this is my country section, which I had to move into the other room. So I got about four shelves of country. Underneath these is all my funk, soul, jazz, blues, which is about maybe four boxes. Then I have two boxes of 12-inch singles that are just hip-hop. I used to have eight full boxes of hip-hop 12-inch singles. And it's pretty I'm, – I'm actually surprised that I've, I'm all the way down to two. And I still have some decent hip-hop 12 inches left, including this one right here, uh, which I did show last week. This is Oh, I Love You, Rakim. <laughs> that, uh, uh, the RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan. Are you a Wu-Tang Clan fan there, Beatles, babe? I've never actually listened to him before, so I, really? I, I, I'm very limited in what I've listened to. I'm the first to admit. Well, okay, so you're California West Coast, right? Yes. Do you mind sharing? I was actually wondering if you were from out here yesterday when I saw you in an A's cap. Oh, no. Well, he's in, he's in, uh, he's in, he's in Nebraska. The world. So. Oh, okay, so I was just like, wait a minute, is he local to me? <laughs> You never know. I could, you know, I could make a visit out there, but uh, no, the A's just moved to Sacramento, from what I hear. I think so. I don't really keep up with it. I just, I know my mom's pissed over it. So. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. You know, that's very crushing news. But I was going to ask you: Are you a fan of uh, hieroglyphics? The Oakland blackouts. I Hieroglyph don't know uh, what that is. Okay, so. Uh, no, that, that'd be like A plus, Delta Funk, Funky Homo Sapien, uh, uh, Opio. I don't think I don't think hip hop is in is in Beetle Babe's wheelhouse. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like I'm very out of my league with that. Okay. Well, I didn't know if like it was an Oakland thing. Like if you like, it you know, might be, like, but I I don't know. <laughs> but you know hieroglyphics. So, but I love hieroglyphics. But right. anyway, uh, I was gonna play this for you guys because this is part of that you know whole red pill manosphere stuff. Yeah, no, this is a funny, this is that digital, digital underground movie, believe it or not. But I'll play a little clip of this. This would be uh, the RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan before he really started sounding like the Wu-Tang Clan. But I'll throw this on here briefly. That's it. It's a funny song. Moving slow, life is a drag. There's money to make you more girls to bag. Fully aware, so I step up on the square. Looking for what? The coolie in the chair. Flex and I flex on the opposite sex. Hit them up quick and step to the next. It seems I'm a theme for a sex routine. Love to hit them scream. They mommy's bosses, oh, always satisfied us, you know how I flow. With sex, I'm not lazy, I'm buck wild and crazy. I kiss the bosoms, but never eat the daisies. And my ladies love me deeply, because I'm handsome, charming, and freaky. And when they meet me, they won't go. And now I'm stuck, I should've said no, no, no. Oh, we you, Rocky. And I love you, too. Oh, we you, Rocky. Thank you. Oh, we you, Rocky. All right, so yeah, that was oh, I love you, Rakim. There's a, actually a really cheesy music video for this out. I'll post this in uh, in the chat here a little bit later, and then I'll also post the link to that. Not getting any Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live sketch that uh, I kicked the show off with, but. Uh, any thoughts on that? Was that a pretty cheesy hip hop song? No, it was good. It was good. Yeah, it, it's a fun little hip hop song, but uh, yeah. the video you got to check the video out. I will post that, like I said. Okay. I'll post that in the description too. But, um, gosh, do you have any uh, songs that you want to throw out at us that maybe remind you of a heartbreak, there, Beetle Babe? I think I mentioned that one earlier. That one uh, monkey song, "While I Cry." Okay. Do you want to? You have it available to you uh, by chance. I can pull it up on YouTube. I mean, that's not the best thing can do. You know, that, that's quite all right. You don't need to do that. Um, gosh, I, was, I guess I was just trying to get the conversation started a little bit. You know, I, I could talk about these records here. Okay. And this is 
because we talk about, you know, uh, breaking up is not an easy thing to do. And you definitely want to be careful about the music that you listen to. There's yeah, certain. You, there's, are, there's you certain on, are you on the throes of a breakup, William? Is that. Should we be concerned? Have you recently broken up with somebody? <laughs> well, but maybe in the past, maybe I made a wrong decision. And I'm going to bring out a new guest here. We are filling okay. up. The show. Wow. Why, Dave, welcome to the show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Am, Wyoming am and Nebraska. Yeah, yeah we are We are neighbors. Yeah. yeah I told William I'm from Nebraska, of course. No, I think he is originally from Nebraska, yeah, but uh, Nebraska, yeah. the Panhandle, right? Yeah, close to Kansas. Western Nebraska, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to show some records. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Elvis Costello and the Attractions. Well, more yeah. like Elvis Costello. Uh, I've talked enough about, like, the first four years, Elvis Costello being pretty great stuff. Uh, but you're going to want to – if you're going through a breakup, don't listen to these records. These okay. are bad records to listen to because – Elvis Costello, yeah. You're, you're most likely to be single for the rest of your life <laughs> if, you, if you listen to these while going through a breakup. Very dangerous stuff. This will make you hate women. I promise you. Throw these records in the car. Oh, okay. You don't have to do that. Noted. I've never heard that album, actually. I thought <laughs> Kind of Blue had a good, sad breakup song on it. The kind funny thing Blue. about Blood and Chocolate, it was actually produced by Nick Lowe, which Nick Lowe's stuff is very poppy and, and very catchy kind of stuff, but... I mean, it's just like, this, this is very cringe for me to listen to. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. All right. Yeah, interesting you mentioned breakup songs in Elvis Costello, because even in Often Powers, there's one of them in there. It's not his song, but he's singing it. But oh, uh, yeah. I'll never fall in love again. It's like, oh, that, that technically counts as fun. No, uh, he's uh, notoriously, uh, I mean, okay, not, he should be notorious for his breakup songs, but I don't think people speak enough on him. But I was giving a warning to anybody out there. If you're going through a breakup, you might want to avoid the guy. But uh, I do have this compilation here. Uh, 50 million Elvis Costello fans can't be wrong. It is a bootleg. Uh, it has a song called Big Tears, which is from the Get Happy era. And I was maybe going to play that as like, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a song that would be okay to listen to. An Elvis Costello breakup song that is okay, but anyway, did, Dave, did you have any opinions, thoughts you wanted to give on uh, sort of our topic tonight? I just wanted to say I think there are three assholes in the chat gallery, but I'm not going to say who. What's going no. on here? No. <laughs> Do I need to go battle them? <laughs> no. My expertise is battling chats, Asperg's. Well, you know, um, I I do. Uh, you know, I, I I like my chat being open yeah. for free speech, and uh, you know, there are certain comments that I see pop up in my chat that I don't particularly love. Mm -hmm. um, I may ignore them, I may respond to them, but uh, one thing that I would like to think, think that I'm skilled at is uh, taking jabs and you know taking insults, and uh, I don't know. It's sort of like the atmosphere I try to create here, so. If you if you yeah. do feel offended by any comments here, I do apologize. Um, if you feel that way, um, sure, show you can have whoever you want in the chat gallery, but yeah, that's all. I'll say. No, you're good, Dave. I mean, uh, you, you, honestly, I got to be honest. You're one of the nicest people I've talked to in the whole VC. I'm as out of the bar as an ass. Oh, I don't care. I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bar. Well, no, that, that, let me uh, see. Hey, uh, say, God, Jill, can I give my like uh, final statement? Because I know I'm kind of like out of my place uh, here, but hey, just thanks for having me, uh, Han. And I actually do enjoy kind of like listening to stuff, even though oh, I'm mostly doing a red uh, pill uh, content. It's nice to get it away from it, it's nice yeah. to get away and touch uh, grass, air quotes, but also listen to some music and uh, stuff. And I think, dude, you're. I know I deal with a lot of um, guys on Ragey Tomato saying is those that you, along with David, uh, John uh, Lee, talk too much and you're um, and they only want to see like red pill blood sports. But bro, you make <laughs> it so much uh, more appealing. So thanks again and uh, support to you guys. Is, okay. is, so, is she going live now or? Uh, she just went live. Okay. So <laughs> I mean, I wasn't planning on going super long tonight. Part of it was also maybe to, you know, rally some people. And if you guys want to, 
jump on over there if you if not if not if it's not your thing that's cool too but we'll probably hang out here have a chat for a little bit longer play some tunes i don't know, maybe go yeah. to like 9 p.m or something yeah i'm gonna oh. stay here this is nice it's good to get away from it's, all the bar fights it's norman maslow oh, norman norman yeah. it's norman maslow well, they didn't who's waste no any stranger time. who's no stranger to oh, the live stream world oh no you are exactly right they're Mr. Ricefields, one second here. Let give, give me just a second. We're we're gonna now. I, I don't want to get the stream banned or anything, but share, we're, share, we're gonna we're gonna share, to, uh, to get a peek and see what's going on on the tomato yes. channel. Yes, Bravo. I don't think you can take, it. take it down. No, we can play it through. You can play it through. Well, we got Mazzy there. Okay, all right. And do we got? I'm, I I got to check the chat real quick and make sure we got a good. Turnout, so it does look like we got uh, the wax is there. We got David Donnelly hanging out, so we got some. Uh, we got a good turnout of the VC there tonight, and they got uh, forty live viewers. We got a good solid turnout here as well. Um, guys, do we, do we want to uh, Beetle Babe? Are you going over there after after we close it, close the show? I out? might, like I said, I just subbed to her today, so I mean, be the first one I've seen. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, I know. I know we got uh, Fred Dobbs, who for sure will be going over there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, He's a super we, fan. Well, of course. And then we got Dave the pickup artist, which, I mean, the show needs a pickup artist. This is the guy I want to see in there tonight. Is Arnie. So, boy, I miss Mazzy. Uh, I sure miss Mazzy on, on lives. It's been a whole half, <laughs> half hour since I last seen him. Yeah, I, I feel like this is this is. Perfect trolling time for a lot of you guys, and uh, I mean, I know I, I I feel like I'm gonna have some fun, but uh, so shall we? Shall we reconvene over there? You know what? Let's hang out here for a little bit. I think we got some people who might want to hear some tunes, and I know the VC is. Here's the thing: is I I do want to start doing this a little bit better for the vinyl community, and that is uh, I'm I'm sorry. Here, I gotta stop uh, sharing that screen. Okay. So, no, I do, I mean, I, I was doing those drama streams there for a while, and part of it was like, it just seemed like that's what, what people wanted to watch. Um, I mean, I may still do stuff like that occasionally, but, uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I want to get back into talking about music, and because that's what this channel started to be about. And and I can throw the, the jokes in there, the Manosphere stuff or whatever, but... Uh, I mean, I don't want this to be. This is not a channel for speed dates. This is not well, a channel. Well, we can talk we, if you want. If you want the topic to be breakup songs, I mean, I can easily pivot and pull out stuff that are good breakup songs. But you nice. don't have them in your collection, so I'm just, I'm just pointing <clears throat> at record jackets and pointing at a song. It's better <laughs> if you just play, play them. Well, you, you know, know what? let me real quick. Okay. Hey, Beetle Babe, nice to meet you, Jen. Is your nice name Jen? You I never knew about you, but I, I just heard about you because I don't. I get on a lot of streams that. I mean, I think that song tells the cold, hard truth right there. Big tears mean nothing. You can count them as they fall. And that, to me, in a nutshell, is breaking up in a relationship. It's so funny that Elvis Costello wrote that song and then went on to record basically album after album of sad, sappy breakup songs. He found his market. Yeah. I know. Well, that song... Oh, 
one of his best songs, and it, it, it was a B-side throwaway, and one of his best songs of his whole career, in my opinion. But, uh, and, and yeah, I, I mean, the, like I said, those fr first four years, very unique, very original, very untouchable, very much mm. a, uh, you know, a, a godfather of New Wave, if there is such a thing. But uh, I got two Elvis Costello albums. He's pretty which cool. ones? Uh, I forget. Let me pull them out. <laughs> I forget the title. Yeah, yeah go grab them. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I think uh, Elvis Costello was like uh, the artist. Like I felt like I needed to get into. Like it, it, you're not cool unless you unless you got all of his records or something like that. But uh, you know, uh, how about Amy Winehouse? I love you more than you'll ever know. You know that. There song? you go. Yeah. That's, uh, a, that's a real. That's a real great song about heartache. That was written by Al Cooper. Yeah. Um, was on the first Blood, Sweat, and Tears record. And uh, she made a huge monster hit out of it. Great record. Absolutely. And I, I tend not to talk about that, I guess, because it seems like it might be a bit obvious or something. But uh... <clears throat> I found Kim Cross said, this year's model. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm not a big Elvis fan. I like him. So, yeah. no. Uh, this year's model, yes. incredible record. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. What was the other one you had? Kim Cross's second hand star, uh, Imperial Bedroom. Yeah, I had that. Imperial Bedroom is the one. So if you are going through a breakup, don't put that on your turntable. So that's all <laughs> I'm going to say. Uh, oh <laughs> okay, so we got the buck stops here. Best track, uh, EC Low. Well, it's it's good Funny about peace, love, and understanding. It's a power, power pop song. That song yeah. is actually a parody of all the '70s uh, power ballads. That all those mid '70s power ballads. That was supposed to be like making fun of all of them, and I think it went over a lot of people's heads. But no, that song wasn't really meant to be like, um, you know, this you know song of a movement like people think it is. But uh, it, it's very much like a. You know, a parody, uh, which you can research that is very true. Um, but uh, anyways, to answer your question here on uh, who are you talking? Who are you talking about? Amy Winehouse. Yeah. So no, a great record, and and really, uh, I mean, it brings back that '60s pop vibe, like the Ronettes, or like oh, yeah. a Vector record in many ways. Um, I did that exact comparison with her before, actually. Are you a fan of Amy Amy Winehouse? A little bit, a little bit. Like yeah. I can't claim to be super into every last thing she ever did or anything, but I liked her. No, she was good. I mean, uh, as far as like uh, when when the music industry needed a good pop artist that was making music, we uh, like that that was a record that came came out. You could listen to it start to finish. Yeah, and that's rare for me because I mean, there's a handful of like modern pop stars that I like, but there's not many, and she managed to make it onto my short list. So that's yeah. already saying something. That's pretty good. I'm just like, damn, like it, it's a shame that we lost her as young as we did. Cause I feel like she had a lot of untapped potential that exactly. would be really yeah. nice to have seen what she would have done with it. I agree with you, Jim. Yeah, no, that's too bad. Um, you know, she's part of that infamous 27, 27 club, club now. Yep. Which I mean, I don't know. I don't know how cool that club really is, but, uh, not really cool, it's just unfortunate. You know, I'm going to throw this question out to you guys. Do you have a... Uh, who is your musical crush? Like, you can give me one, or you can give me a top five, or a few, but um, I'm going to throw one out there. Um, I ha I've i always had a huge crush on Jeannie C. Riley. Oh, yeah. And I just love those, like... I love those 70s style uh, skirts that she wears. I just have always... Like, whenever I see this... Not a rare record at all. Um, I do this all the time, but I just love her outfit so much that when, whenever I see this record, I usually just pick it up no matter what. But uh, there's also a Jeannie C. Riley record. Give me a second to find it. <laughs> uh, this fold out uh, of her, uh, which is really mm. But uh, while, I look, while I look for it, uh, do any of you have a... Thinking. I'm thinking. Well, and as you're thinking, I guess I just found it. It had to be a singer that is just so so captivating 
I mean, I mean, I mean, Debbie Harry would probably fall into that category. I was waiting of, for a lot of straight men, right? Because oh, yeah. because yep, she's so fine looking, yeah. Um, and uh, you know, such an ingenue. I'm trying to think, who else? Um, you know, I saw Debbie Harry or Blondie like ten years ago, and there were still a lot of guys going to that show who you could tell had a crush on her still. Cool. <laughs> It is no joke. So for anyone who spent any time around my channel, they can already answer this question a mile away. They know about my thing for Liza Minnelli that I've had for years, especially <laughs> Liza with a Z in the little red dress and everything. Just wow. brings me to my damn knees. So. Well, okay. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit new to your channel, Beetle Babe, so I did not know that. But Oh, okay. Well, yeah. now you do. <laughs> and I know that I'm in a very... Very small minority with that one, but yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so, uh, Wyoming Dave, I guess that's, uh, I guess you're next. Well, I used to think she and Easton living in, well, they still are living in John are pretty hot. <laughs> okay. She and Easton. Uh huh? He said she and Easton. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, it's okay. I mean, you, you, don't, you don't need to have the acceptable answer here. I mean, you know, I mean, it's it's all good, Dave, and we are accepting of everyone here. I mean, uh, I mean, did you have a crush on Elvis Costello? He's not that good looking. <laughs> okay, he really fair. isn't. Um, and really I, I don't even know who are the good looking rock stars. You know? I mean, I guess real subjective. I guess while, while, while you brainstorm that, Wyoming Dave. I mean, I'm, I love Laura Nero's voice, but I don't think she's hot. Okay. okay. See, there, there's another. That's, there's that's another a problem. Up. That's a problem, right? Yeah. No, so, um, no, I, I that's will. Why, say, that's why I named Debbie Harry. I will say this. So, Dolly Parton, not only is she gorgeous, not only does her voice sound beautiful, uh, I would still shag her to this day. I would too. <laughs> I was one of the people defending her in the cheerleader outfit not that long ago, and people were like, "Oh, put it away." I'm like, "No, I'd, I'd still hit it." <laughs> real, real quick, I'm gonna go to full stream when I sh as I show this because it's just too cool. So, guys, check this out. So this is Jeannie C. Riley. This is uh, "Things Go Better with Love." I mean, not the most raunchiest fold out that you're gonna see. Still pretty cool. I mean, I don't know. I got a pretty big crush on Jeannie C. Riley, so for my money, yeah. has been on my wall before. So, but Dolly Parton, uh, one of my favorites yeah. too. I was gonna throw. I mean, uh, I, I've said this enough on my channel. Huge Dua Lipa fan. She's like new artist, and she's beautiful. I like her, I like she's her gorgeous. Music. I like her music too. I, I think. She sings very monotone in in many ways, but for some reason it just uh, it does it for me. Or I don't know. She's a cigarette smoker, so I don't know if that has anything to do with singing in monotone. But uh, I don't know about monotone necessarily. It, it affects the voice, but not like that. She has a very uh, she's very sexy. I think her singing style is. But uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so there's another one of my music crushes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Emmy Lou Harris is a good one. Taylor Swift. I mean, I feel like either my music country or my music crushes are country artists from the '70s or like Taylor Swift. But that's, uh, fair that's valid. I want to throw this one out there as uh, June Carter. Absolutely gorgeous. I didn't see that coming, but yeah, she is. Yeah, no, and, and one thing I wanted to mention is that we don't really talk about the Grand Ole Opry anymore, but uh, she was a mainstay in like maybe the mid, mid fifties, late fifties and very corny sense of humor, super, super corny. I would normally, if I were to meet a girl with that, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Lady well, of Pence. Pence. I have a Pence. Cold Blood. Heard any of their music, <laughs> Cold Blood. I heard of it. Probably that. like Arnie. four feet, four feet tall, Which, and, but, but a like monster <laughs> voice. Monster, monster oh, voice. Oh, um, like I, I have that record in the other room somewhere. But uh, um, no, I was going to show. Uh, or, okay. Well, anyway, uh, uh, no, June, June Carter. Oh. She, she was just very, cool, very cheesy and had this really cheesy sense of humor. But for some reason, watching those old 
that's when I fell in love with her was just watching those old Grand Ole Opry episodes. And she's just so fun to watch. One of the most enjoyable people ever on that show. But June Carter, very underrated. Uh, very beautiful. Anyway, does, does anybody does anybody else want to throw a music crush out there? I mean, a newer one, but I mean, it's Lady Gaga. I mean, I know I'm not alone on that one. So okay. I feel a little more normal with that one. See, I don't have a crush on Lady Gaga. I, I, I doesn't do very much for me anyway. But. That's okay. I mean, she's so photogenic. I can't wait to see this new movie. Same. I saw that trailer the other day and was like, holy crap. Like, on paper, that synopsis, I was like, how's that going to work as a musical? But then I saw that, I was like, I, I will sit down and shut up. Actually, sign me up. I want to see that when it comes out. You know, Talk about um, making a crossover. She really made the crossover to film. She sure did. I got Stevie a very, Nicks, Balding Boomer. I was going to Stevie Nicks is, I'm, I'm surprised uh, someone just said that now. I guess that name was eventually going to come up because, because she's a lot of people, like like Debbie Harry in, in, in many ways. Right. A lot of people have a crush on her. But. Great slick. Oh, yeah. She was absolutely gorgeous back in the day, too. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I have uh, an unsung crush that I do want to show, at least since we're on the topic. Let, let me go look for a record real quick. So I'll be okay. right back. But if you want to keep the conversation going. I'll do my best. Hey, hey I don't mean to wrap. What, what, I, I think I've heard about that. Lady Gaga is going to be a new movie, you guys say? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the, uh, the Joker. The Joker movie. Yeah, like Joker, Foley, you or something. I don't speak French. I'm trying oh. here, but... I'm behind. I guess I haven't seen that ad on TV or anything yet. <laughs> You'll see the they're cool. on YouTube. You can see the uh, this the trailer, trailer just got released like last. Okay, week. I'll have to look that up. Cool. Yeah, I think it was just a couple days ago they dropped that. Very cool. Yep. I know she's acted in two other movies, but was... all right. So I found a few records here. I do want to throw this out as a musical crush that I have. And hold on, real quick, the buck stops here. Threw out another musical crush that I have. Uh, Gentry Gold to oh, Bobby Gentry. Bobby Gentry, gorgeous, oh, yeah, and I she love. Uh, she has that sort of very funky country funk, which is a, a genre she created by herself. So, uh, very brilliant, and uh, you know, she sort of fell into obscurity. Everyone was kind of wondering what happened to her. Um, I think she became like part owner of the Phoenix Suns basketball team, and lives down in Arizona. So. I think when she hit the peak of her music career, she sort of stepped yeah. out and was just like, she cashed in and just, you know, be, decided it was better to be a a legend in music history rather than to just stay around and just make a bunch of albums. Like, oh, you know, oh, like, Gene, oh, C. Yeah. Gene C. Riley just kind of did that too. Uh, a lot of like female artists just fell into this, like, you know, they became a lost cause. And uh, Bobby Gentry was smart in investing her money the way she did. But uh, real quick, uh, I do want to give a quick shout out. I don't, I don't think he's here, but Vinyl and Kicks eighty six, who has trolled me uh, for Kitty Wells records. Well, this is Kitty Wells and Johnny Wright. Kitty and Johnny Wright, who was part of Johnny and Jack, just talking about the Grand Ole Opry. Well, they had a child together who was the very lovely, adorable, gorgeous <clears throat> Ruby Wright, and this is her. Okay. Old record she ever put out i'm gonna put this full screen here real quick um so one moment here one second so this is ruby Wright. this record came out i think 1964 something like that her only record and she's just so beautiful that uh yeah she had a kid very fast in life and um this is a pretty rare record not super desirable it's a little bit on the cheesy country pop side but when i saw this record i was like you know what you are even more ad adorable than taylor swift herself i wish she could just jump out of this record cover and marry me right now but anyways uh an, uh a music crush that probably nobody knew of ruby Wright. just wanted to throw that out there as a uh, dernia dernia by ruby Wright. it's a very to be a very good gang me by roger miller well, and funny is my name is William Bill, or they, they uh, call me Billy growing up as a kid. She has a song on here which is very, very cheesy called "Billy Broke My Heart at Walgreens." So, <laughs> really? yeah, no, I mean, some of the country songs back then, we're we're, all, we're very you know on the cheesy side, but uh, but cheesy can be fun though. 
Oh yeah, no, uh, they they were that that record. Well, for for its time, this this Ruby Wright record, you know, these songs they they were like they didn't sign her to a new new deal. I think she had a kid pretty much after she made this record oh, yeah. too. And then her parents were actually more famous than her anyway. So I think they were the yeah. labels wanted them to make more records rather than her. Uh, funny thing is, is she actually passed away bef before uh, Johnny Wright uh, and uh, Kitty oh, Well. So. Yeah, just an interesting sort of uh, fact there. But I know I, I I've been waiting to talk about that record uh, for the right time. Uh, well, oh, oh, hold on. You know what? Actually, Jason Rojas, welcome to the show. Hold on, real quick, because I know he he's not watching By the radio. Question here. only. What's that? I want to get Rojas only. up here. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, let Let's see uh, if we can get Rojas up here real quick. And uh, I mean. This really, honestly, <clears throat> for the people who don't want to watch the Raging Tomato show in a way, too. I mean, I will kind of cut this off at a point, and I mean, I don't know how much I, I, I'm interested in that at all. I don't even know what the topic is or, or, or anything like that, but I'm sure Mazzy's going to be, uh, you know, whipping us, you know, into shape, us young little whippersnappers, but anyways. Uh, I don't know about that. Well, okay. I just posted the Streamyard link. We do have invisible. Here. So uh, I'm here for you, Beetle Babe. I'll support you if it comes we'll up. We'll see how this goes, anyway. I, I promise. I promise. I'm you. Like I'm sure he will link it to me if he comes up. We can you know like with him down in the comments. Or something. <laughs> you know, he'll be fine. He'll and play, be fine. Uh, 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 I'm gonna play <laughs> "Billy Broke My Heart" at Walgreens song. It's a very okay. cheesy song, so if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah, just put, I mean, it's a little cheese. We can have a little cheese going on here on a Saturday night, right, Ron? No? It's your, it's your show? Sure, sure. Well, and Jason Rojas wants to hear it, and that's all that matters. So give me a second. Got to do the backspin on the country record. You guys ever do that before? Never. Don't try to, only try it at home, something like that. Hold on a second. Well, you have to have a record player that wins that. <laughs> Over a drink for those who think young, I got the sad news. While having lunch, Billy walked in, told me goodbye. He wanted his ring back, for he told me there'd be no wedding this year. Billy broke my heart at Walgreens, and then I cried all the way to Sears. Yeah, so Billy broke my heart at Walgreens and I cried all the way back to Sears. And I don't know if you heard that. That lyric was actually, I, it sounded like a steel guitar, like a talking steel guitar. Probably. I so, remember. yeah, very cheesy song. Uh, I didn't play the whole thing for you, but if you do, it should be somewhere on YouTube or gosh, I don't know. It's, it is a little bit obscure. I did only pay 50 cents for this record too. So, I mean, I think this can be purchased on Discogs like less than five bucks just because like it is one of those obscure country records at this point in, in time. But uh, then again, if it's so obscure that it's not on YouTube, you might be able to get away with putting it up there and you'd be the first person to even have it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what? I could even start the Ruby Wright fan club. And, yeah, you know, well, I'm sure that like you can't be the only one who remembers <clears throat> her. Well, no, the thing is, is like when I found this record, it was upstairs at Canesville, hot summer day and everything. And I was like, wait a sec. I mean, I just fell in love with that beehive hair hairdo there. And I was like, hold on a second. Who is this chick? And when I got the record home, I'm like, wait, that's the daughter of, you know, uh, Kitty Wells and Johnny Wright. And, you know, it, it is quite funny. But uh, uh, one, one second. We got Rojas reaction. Ro Rojas reacts. Uh, damn, I never thought Walgreens would... Yeah. Uh, I thought, okay, I this it didn't make me okay. I guess now that I can think back on the the sad day that Ruby Wright had 
now, Jason, yeah, it does break my heart. But uh, when I heard this song, honestly, this is like, wow, this is the cheesiest shit I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I would never do that to you, though, Ruby Wright. You know that. I would never break your heart at Walgreens. I would hey, give my tears. Anyways. Um, hey, William. Yes. You know, I have books based on billboard charts. I think I've. I've looked her up. I think that that was Ruby Wright's only Billboard Top Twenty country hit back in '64. I think you're right. Yeah, uh, she didn't Billboard. have. Um, hit the Billboard country chart. I know that. No, the, when I was looking her up, that was seemed to be like her only song too. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, and 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 Durnia, You know, uh, let me. I can play Durnia, which was a very catchy song, if I remember real quick. That's the supposed to be a parody of Roger Miller's Gang Me. I think. For yeah. Example. Yep. The, Thanks for the facts there, Wyoming Dave. I've actually never heard Dernia, oh, believe it or not. <laughs> I've heard Dang Me a dozen times. Well, and shout out to Tuco, who's a big uh, Roger Miller fan. Well, here I sit at home, just me and the kids, wondering where you went and what you did. I bet you done spent your whole paycheck. If I didn't love you, I'd break your neck. I said, Darn ya, burn ya, darn ya, burn ya. They'll take a chair and burn ya, burn ya. But then what would I do? Just sit around and wait for you. Dun, 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 bam, dun, 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 dun. One more time. First of the week, the cops come and got us for disturbing the peace. They took us to jail, and that was the very first time we've been out together since '59. I said, Darn ya, burn ya, burn ya, burn ya. They'll take a chair and burn ya, burn ya. But then what would I do? Just sit around and wait for you. One more. And violets are blue. A pie's got a crust, and you do too. You're a son of a gun, I'll agree with you there. You need 30 days in the electric chair. I said, Turn ya, turn ya, turn ya, turn ya. They'll take a chair and burn ya, burn ya. But then what would I do? Just sit around and wait for you. That was a good song. Hearing that all over you know it, it really had that. Uh, you could hear the Roger Miller in it for sure. That that sort of, you know, nod to Roger Miller in a way. But I kind of felt like maybe that had that country funk to it, like Bobby Gentry. Yeah. Yeah, no, I thought, yeah. No, uh, whoever suggested this record, thank you. I don't know who that was. but uh, You can work these songs into your show. I'm sure you won't have a copyright strike. I was going to say, they can't possibly have these in the system. <laughs> yeah. No, like Ed, no, like Edba. With, with a lot of, most songs, uh, you should be able to get away with on copyright strikes. This for sure, I don't see any issues with. But uh, really, this whole setup tonight, this is, I did this, which is close to my stereo set in my my dining room tables is what I call it. But uh, this might be like, I don't know, if I go live, this might be more of a new setup. It's easier to just, you know, play some records. And does this sound okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, probably not the greatest thing in the world. And then, I guess, Dave, let me ask you, while you were looking up information on this, did you catch the year? This came out the same year as Dank, 64. 64. So I guess we could say happy, what, uh, 60th anniversary to Dernia by Ruby Wright. So that was one thing that I was trying to uh, come up with a theme was uh, anniversaries. Well, if we pull out a 1964 record, even better. So cool that we could spotlight uh, Ruby Wright here tonight. So Good. I never even heard that one before. Actually, during it. Yeah, I wasn't even expecting to play it. So whoever suggested that, well, thank you. Anyways, yeah, I actually had a bunch of uh, hip hop selected. So I mean, we could get really raunchy with it because I got Shorty the Pimp by Too Short, 
which you know we can go from Ruby right to too short. I don't know how, how alarming that would be to people, but uh, I, I showed this record here recently, uh, Charisma and Peanut Butter Wolf. There's a song on here with the the lyrics just hit home with like. Uh, I guess I won't play the song, but do go seek out this record. This is some West Coast hip hop, so Beetle Babe, you might be into this. But there's uh, a lyric on here. I'm Girl, sure. Girls just want to have she's fun. On, she's on it. Okay, but, but real quick. She's taking notes. Beetle Babe's taking notes. You know, she's working at her budget. Yeah. So she's going to buy some serious hip hop records. On the 19th. Well, I'll she's sing gonna, She's going to rank them. She's going to rank hip hop on her, on her channel. Well, let's see. Actually, we could even have a hip hop ranking, but real quick and shout out to uh, my boy Nathaniel Mars. I want a Nathan. favorite lyric from this record Girls just want to have fun, but deep inside my heart, I know that girls just want to have funds. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. And this comes back to the whole thing tying it together, Manosphere. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I, uh, no, when I was going around looking for like, hey, let's, Let's have a Manosphere themed record night uh, before the tornado show. And I don't know, uh, Nathaniel Mars, I don't know how long you've been hanging out, but we were playing selections from Cool Keith's Sex Style. Uh, and then I am actually thinking of a, I was maybe looking for a suggestion from someone. Does anybody want to hear a heartbreak song or a song that reminds them? Or maybe it's a good warning. I was going to throw this uh, uh, Girls Act Stupidly song from this. Uh, Who's uh, that? Yeah, Super Lover C and Casanova. I don't remember them. I don't remember them. Yeah, I like no, the haircuts for the haircuts alone. Yeah, no, I this like is the, old like it. Uh, th This has even like uh, Mad Lib Quasimodo samples on it. But no, this is one of those, uh, you know, one of those hot songs about, uh, you know, one of those hot songs about being with a chick or like something that LL Cool J might write, something like that. Yeah, but, yeah I know him. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was, I even, I had some uh, weird ideas, like you know, Snoop Dogg doggy style. But this could actually get pulled. You know, yeah, don't want for stuff. Snoop, I could. think you would. But Are yeah, there I don't any hip hop channels in the vinyl community? I think you're the only. No, mm. I'm not the only one. There's Disco I Devil and some hip hop, and then I've heard that Michael Forty Five will talk about some hip hop. I would consider Stunty a good. Uh, you know, he he plays way beyond hip hop and a lot more like the ambient and techno kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't yeah. know, I, I'm sure he might get offended by some of those words, but no, he's a good source for hip hop. He's not going to play it all the time, but uh, if, if you uh, if you ask him, he might. But um, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to throw this one out there. Now I get into you know I I mentioned Taylor Swift or I got a Dua Lipa crush going on. Well, I have a guilty pleasure, Jonas Brothers. I'm a sucker for you. I've heard that song. Yeah. One of the best songs of the last 10 years. Or how I mean, this can't be that old. Yeah, no. It makes you feel better. I still listen to Hannah Montana. So well, we, for, you know, I mean, I'm always gonna have a you know the Weezer Blue album I'll never not like, which by the way, I think that has an anniversary this year too. But uh no part of it for themes on this show is I, I maybe want to do like uh you know, an anniversary show where we talk about our favorite albums from like, you know, 1970, 1974, which I did have a, I do want to spotlight this record as, as far as a 50th anniversary, yeah, which sure. maybe a few weeks ago, I should have done that instead of trying to do a Blue Oyster, whole Blue Oyster Cold episode. But this is the 50th anniversary, great Blue Oyster Cold record and the, you know, the, the sound of Blue Oyster Cold that you would want to hear. I would even call this an underrated record. Fantastic band. I like and, that band. And Long I wanna, Island. Does anyone know? Like they're they have been accused of being like like a cult band. I've heard that before. And I'm like, are I, they really? I don't think well, that's true, is it? They put this symbol all over their records. It's like this uh upside up, like it's hooked cross, which is like uh I think, I think, that's, just, I think that's just art direction. That's one of my record company. That's one of my tattoos. I got the BOC tattoo. Well, the, but there are people who say that's like it's like a code of like uh, cross, yeah. like a secret society kind of thing. Maybe like I don't know if you've looked into, into like I don't know. It's not like Bohemian Grove or anything, but 
I mean, they were just accused, like, along with, like, Led Zeppelin as being, like, one of those black magic bands. And, I mean, sure. I, I don't know if, it, if anyone from that time frame has some insight that I might not know of. But, um, hold on a second. Dernia was released in 66, two years before Wax was born. 66. So, okay. Wow. He's That's just an anthropologist. He's a wax. He's a wax anthropologist. I'm, oh, uh, Arnie is. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I am amused. Whatever's going on between him and Rob is, I do find amusing. But uh, I mean, I do. I will say this. I do think Rob a little bit needs his, uh even the playing field if he's going to be a little bit of a punk. So how so? I, I don't think he should bully people. Like I, I feel like on Rachel's ghost, he looks for opportunities to bully people, but he's not going to do that to like, I don't think he would do that on screen with like people like me and you, Mike. He's only going to do it when he is on camera on her stream. Right. If, if we're not on stream, he's going to bash us all day. But if we're sitting right there, I, I think his words are going to be quite different, but <laughs> what do you think Wyoming Dave? How do you think it would go? Would you repeat that? <laughs> if William and I were on camera over at Rachel's Ghost with Rob the Wax, how do you think it would go? <laughs> Not very good. Not very good. That's all. That's all I'll say. <laughs> like, hey, Rice Fields Mike, I wish just I, I wish someone would have kept up. Rachel deleted all her streams back. I wish Rachel would have kept up that show where you had a knockout drag out fight with a uh, rob i never seen what happened on that but oh well it's gone <laughs> it was deleted yeah yeah oh well mm. i'm nostalgic for it though <laughs> I bet. hey i i may have been cutting out there i do apologize guys i guess we'll no, a couple no, of I... minutes, and i might go ahead and play a song to sort of take everybody out um okay um thanks so much for, uh everyone michael david beatles babe and uh i think we have one more guest on here too uh great having you on here and this is sort of what i want to do on saturday nights is just play records have fun we can drink some beer and this we're not setting anybody to like you know we're not holding anybody to you know we're not torturing anybody we're just having a good time here on saturday night that's kind of what yeah. i want to yeah but uh, yeah, I, I think maybe, well, we got this. We got Tupac, I Get Around. I've heard of Tupac, of course, yeah. From 1993. I wanted to come out, go out with some hip hop. This might be a good one, maybe. But I was thinking like, do, do, let me ask you this. Before I play a song, what were your thoughts on those Cool Keith sex style? What did you think of those songs that I played? It was entertaining. I mean, I don't think you could okay. get any of us to second guess your hip hop choices, William. Well, let me. I think, I think Beetle Babe will second me on that. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm like, I have no point of comparison here, so I, I feel like I don't really have a say. <laughs> I, okay, I am. I invited. A I'm like, friend. I it's like it's like, like you're going to the PTA. <laughs> it's like you're going to like the Omaha PTA, and you're saying, yeah. "Ladies, I'd like to hear your opinion on Tupac." Okay. And yeah. uh, you know, you're not going to get an opinion, will you? Well, now. Uh, I played the, I played this record. I had a, a friend and his girlfriend come over. This was in college. I was like, "Hey guys, you're over. Let me play this record for you." And the dude's girlfriend got so offended when I put this record on. And I mean, that was sort of the, the whole idea was to see her reaction to it. But no, I mean, the, the nature on this record it is just it's a pretty nasty record. So even for hip hop, this, even for hip hop, even for hip live crew. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, this would this would be, this would put two life crew to shame. Oh, really? But, they were pretty bad. <laughs> anyways, guys, it does look like Mazzy and Sarah the Raging Tomato have seventy one live viewers. I think wow. it's a record for Sarah. How many do you have right here? Oh, we only got twenty five hanging out here. But I, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna post the link to that. Uh, what whatever's going on there right now. So that way, if you guys want to go and. Troll away. I would love to see it. Um, uh, but no, I, I think if nothing else, it should be a little bit of fun. And I mean, I don't know how late I'm staying up to watch this thing, but uh, I, I'll go ahead and post a link for you guys. And uh, I guess maybe uh, since I got everyone here, if you're not yet uh, sub to my channel, 
would love to have you here on a regular basis. And then if you liked what we, if you liked our little party here tonight, like the video, that'd be nice feedback. But I can do that. But anyway, then I just posted the link to the Raging Tomato show. So if you want to go over there and check it out, I'm going to play a song to kind of close out. And um, gosh, what should I play? I, I think I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna go with this Tupac song. Okay. I get around by Tupac. I think that's a good way to go here. So is it, is it the Beach Boys? Is it a cover of the Beach Boys? Ah, uh, I uh, wish that would be pretty cool. No, no, Mike. <laughs> no, it, it is not. But no, I remember this was the first Tupac song I ever heard. In uh, I was probably ten years old. Honestly, 10, 11 years old, and. Uh, I used to watch uh, BET. Uh, yeah, I remember BET. Yes, yeah, BET Rap City, and then. Uh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh no! Oh, BET yeah. Rap City, and then Yo Yo MTV Raps. I remember Yo MTV Raps. <laughs> probably just play the first verse there just because you know don't want to get the stream taken down or anything but i think that might thinking. be the way to go is just like don't need to play the whole song and then that way if uh somebody out there wants to hear the song in a better quality it's like sure we but gave it, you the idea it's a public service there yeah. you go well i think i am going to close this one out here and i'm going to okay. i'm going to jump in i'm going to see what's going on there okay I'm, i i'm going to have to you're okay. gonna have to do it. You're gonna have to do it because she's, you know, she's your gal pal, and you know you want to make sure that you know well, you keep them in check a little bit. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, Sarah's not someone I'm gonna meet in real life ever. She's just like an internet partner. We've helped each other's channels out a little bit. She's not someone who I would pursue a relationship with. So I don't want people to get that twist or anything. I'm interested to see what's going on on that with her and Mazzy because Mazzy okay. will draw live viewers that is a guarantee the funny thing about the two streams that i did uh the troll stream and then that monday live stream which just was a just happened uh and it was the one where the the, the thumbnail that has the pac-man theme to it uh but mazzy was on both of those and when he jumped on my stream over 100 live viewers so people will people love mazzy people watch mazzy and in fact in omaha uh, people know me as a YouTuber now, but they all they were all super impressed when when they saw me at the record show. I'm like, dude, Mazzy was on your stream, so all of them were super impressed. But a few of them were, and I mean, I I I, I almost want to say maybe that's why Sarah's having him on. I don't know. It is. I don't know. You do what you do, man. <laughs> Everyone wants. I mean, I, I guess we got. I, I think we do got Arnie Zanzibar and shout out to Jason Rojas for. My VC homies. I hope, uh, yeah, we are homies. We are homies again. What do you think of that, Mike Ricefields? Me and Mr. Rojas, homies once again. You had I'm so happy. I'm so Jason's happy. He's a pretty nice guy, from what I see yeah. If, if anybody who had faith in that, it was it was it was Ricefields. So thank you for <laughs> keeping the faith. But uh, guys, I guess uh, that's about all I got. Any uh, final thoughts here from anybody on the panel? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, had a great time, great Saturday night, and uh, you know, I I might I might go out to the bar and get a drink. Okay. Just to like, just so I'm not sitting here on a live stream all the time because I feel yeah. like, you know, and what I, I feel like I just want to here, and I could easily spend the next five hours watching Sarah's stream because who knows how long that's going to go. What time I, is it in I, Omaha right now? What time I, is it in Omaha? He's in Central. He's in Central on Mountain. What time is it? 
Oh, nice. uh, I got nine fifteen. I guess you'd have. Hey, to it's before ten a.m. You know what that means? You're in the zone. <laughs> got time. You're in the zone. I'm in the zone. No. <laughs> you know what? I, you're right. I better close the stream out, and maybe I will. Maybe I'll cross my fingers. Maybe. We'll have to talk tonight. Yep. <laughs> anyway, All right. Yeah. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So much. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah, and uh, I, I always have a last word with my with my crew, with with the crowd here. So, yes, yes. but thank you so much, Beetle Babe and and Michael and yes. uh, and shout out to the UKVC. I don't know if you saw that yesterday, but it was nice for both me and Stunty to go on. We all had a good laugh. We all got along, and I think I saw it. we were able to put it all water under the bridge. And it, it is what it is. And uh, but all right, all but right. anyway. Guys, thanks so much. Okay. We'll pick you out with a little more of this clip here. And then uh, if you want to jump over to the Sarah the Raging Tomato channel and watch Mazzy speed date the tomato, who knows what could what could happen? We could see sparks fly and uh, wedding bells ring. Who knows? <laughs> but All right, guys. Anyways, All yeah. Right. Have a good one, Mike. And we'll see you next time. And Jen, you too. Don't stop for hoes here on the Pumping Vinyl channel. Let them always know Now you can tell from my everyday fits I ain't rich, so sneaks and this is with them tricks I'm just another black man caught up in the mix Trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents That's man in Just cause I'm a freak don't mean that we can hit the sheets Baby, I can't say that Cause you don't recognize me I'm Chuck G, the one who put the satin on your panties Never knew what to do that share me I guess What's up, love? How you doing? Right. Well, I've been hanging, singing, trying to do my thing Oh, you heard that I was banging? Your home girl you went to school with That's cool, but did she tell you about her sister and your cousin thought I wasn't uh, Since we gave you made for Mitchell alone But it's a money game, my mm -hmm. stand So just let me get it go And don't mistake my statement for a clown We can keep it on the down low, long as you know that I get around